live as Mike is testing, texting his a, booty see it. girl. Uh, Rangers for the under and A's for the under, uh, $100. Um, <laughs> Mavericks, <laughs> Mavericks Heat. We're going to do Mavericks Heat over for 50 um oh i'm sorry did we start i yes, oh, I, yes. My, I, I, I i was lying i was lying to our guests mm. telling them how professional we aren't and then i realized that we aren't so it works out perfectly fine Can, look, at, uh, of the audience. look at this so setup right here look at this setup right here and then tell us who's the professional and who's not it's not eric and i <laughs> yeah we're we're, little... we are not professionals don't try no, it at home no these guys um, these guys you got it going on if if you stumbled into this 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 video and you don't know who mike and i are i am eric tenkar your bartender in the osr my once a week work spouse on this side of the screen mm -hmm. somewhere over there is bad mike battle best known for north texas rpg con uh beneath me but that will will change mm -hmm. as we put up like the kickstarter that we're looking at um is none other than david Betty. Uh, Weird Frontiers is uh, probably what he is known for. Uh, 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 another book Doorstop. that can that can stop uh, oh probably God. a forty-four magnum. Oh, easily, oh, yeah. yeah, easily, a easily. And uh, David's uh, partner in crime in much of this, Gilbert Esai. Oh, Gilbert. That is that is the panel until Jim Kitchen pops in later, in which case this all goes to shit, it and will. It will, we will have pandemonium. Pandemonium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Jim wanted to pop in because he is a huge fan of these guys, and we said just give us an hour with them because once Jim stops talking, he will not stop, and so we won't get any words in. We didn't headlines. say that, Jim, by the way. Oh, I, I just said it right now. I just I said yeah. it right now. So so we're, we're going to talk to them about what they've got going on, and then we will uh, we'll have a free-for-all the last hour, if you guys are okay with that. So I like it. Mm. Thanks for having us on, guys. Hey, long oh, no. past due. Long past due to have you guys on. Excuse me. I'm just trying to catch up with the... Uh... Oh, he got all emotional there. The cat, so yeah, but hold on a second. Yeah. See, now, I, I told you, I got to move stuff around because we we we, ha, we, ha, we have a Kickstarter on the screen that we need to talk about. And, um, by the way, I, I, I love the art on this. I was... I, I, I looked at it when I did the post the other week, but I looked at it closer tonight. I was getting this ready, and that is the best locomotive I've ever seen. I think in my life. Holy crap! <laughs> Looks like it yeah. came straight out of hell, doesn't it? The art yeah. is exceptional. Yes, exceptional. Yeah, Steve Kane is—he's uh, actually in the UK, and he's jam up. He's done uh, most of the covers for the uh, the stretch goal adventures. This is the first adventure that we're putting out that's not a stretch goal, and. Uh, He's done, I think, all but maybe two, and a, a gentleman from Australia who's also awesome, Zon D, did those. But Steve, he's uh, he's got away with these covers. I really like what he does. Oh, yeah, yeah, that that, that is awesome. It, 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 for some reason, I want to start saying, and, and "Yes, Bob, if you've heard me sing, go f yourself." Um, I'm. I'm and Jeff Bro Bro locomotive <laughs> breath is of course coming into my head, and I don't I don't know why. It just it's the only th it's the only song I can think of that isn't like that's a rock song that is about a locomotive. But that is awesome. Yes. Oh, we oh. can play Mid Midnight Train of Georgia, right? Or Crazy Train? Or no, hey now, let's so. let's not date ourselves by throwing out you know. <laughs> well, I think it's all it's all going to date us, man. <laughs> yeah, we're dated no matter what you do. So. But uh, no, this this is really, really sharp looking. And I see there's a a ten thousand dollar pledge goal, a uh, stretch goal that was already hit. So that's nice. Yeah, we uh, we're kind of in a a little bit of a I don't know what you'd say, Bert, but uh, we had a person who actually pledged three thousand dollars from Brazil, 
and they've only backed, uh, I think, one other Kickstarter. So that may not be true numbers. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Whoa. We'll talk about that. Yeah, well, it's probably <laughs> something that would be interesting for folks who actually, ha- and I know that there are a few folks that, I've, that I have discussed it with have had it happen to them as well. But sometimes people actually, A, I don't know if it's to hinder the campaign or to try and boost it because, sorry, my cat's knocking things down. Um, but uh, sometimes when they do that, they'll pull their uh, pledge out like around 24, right. or I think maybe 48 mm-hmm. hours before it ends, and it'll either tank it or, you know. So we're, I'm kind of thinking that maybe this $3,000 pledge from Brazil is probably not. Uh, I don't yeah, think it's no, that's... that many copies of the adventure. Now, I'm not saying it's a great adventure, but that's. Uh, yeah, yeah no, that's a little uh, fugazi. Mm. Yeah, no, I that. that mm. Yeah, I, I don't think you need cop instincts to kind of go, what? Yeah, even a fireman figured that one out, Tinkar. <laughs> wow. Hey, hey, I have a lot. I, I respect the firefighters. Listen, there's this whole thing. I I became a cop, and, and the first thing I was told is, oh, listen, we don't get along with firefighters. Tell that in the academy. <laughs> Honest to God, <laughs> they teach that in the academy that. Firefighters, they teach nope, them the academy, really there's, a little, there's a little rivalry. But then they sent me to the South Bronx. And the South Bronx is not like the rest of the city. The South Bronx had an institutional memory of the 70s and early 80s when firehouses had sector cars assigned to them with cops that often drove with shotguns and long arms they brought in from home, hunting weapons, to escort fire trucks during the worst of the city's, uh, the burning down of the South Bronx, because firemen would often get shot at when they were going to these jobs. So that's why they were cops assigned. So I got to the South Bronx and uh, firehouses, you, you'd you have a foot post as a rookie and the, you'd walk by a firehouse on, on Easter Sunday and the firemen would roll out there and they're like, yeah, oh guys, we're, gonna, we're having dinner at five o'clock and you're working until midnight. It's like, yeah. Come back at five o'clock, put five dollars on the till, eat as much as you want. Our house is your house. So I never experienced that rivalry with the fire department. If I worked in some, I don't know, uh, less intense area as a rookie, I probably would have had time to have that rivalry. But for us, it was just an extended family. So yeah, that's how it is here in the south. You know, it works out. It works out pretty well. And besides, but you're a cat person. I mean, yeah, that's your, that's a winner in my yeah, book. Mine's, I mean, mine's running around here somewhere. She usually pops in about halfway through the show. Yeah, Bo- Bert, Bert and I him. both are uh, big cat lovers. Bert's pretty much, uh, I think he's got a goose, too. <laughs> I got a homestead. I got chickens. I got a goose. The cats run the upstairs. Oh. I got a dog downstairs. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, we've, got a, we, we've got a cat and a dog. My, by the way, uh, as an aside, my, my son is up visiting for from uh, Salt Lake City. He works for uh, one of the airlines. And uh, my cat has a rivalry with my son. She understands his importance. So when he comes, she woofs. She has a woof. She was a street cat that we, we, we took in. She was only in the street for like six months. But she learned to woof like a dog. And it's woof, woof. And I'm like, and she, you'll only hear it with my son because she's like, I, I have to tell him that he, he's not that important. And I would do that because I'm a cat dog or whatever. I have, we may hear it. She's sitting on a chair behind me, listening to where he is somewhere else in the house. So if he comes back in, we'll, and you hear a woof. It's not the dog on the other side. It's my cat. Go figure, it, figure that one out. Still don't understand but, and I will say this, Eric, thank you for, I mean, anytime I'm doing something to raise money here locally for feline rescues, you're always on the spot helping me promote it and donate. So I can't thank you enough for all that over the years. Cool. Like I said, you know, this girl came in uh, three and a half, three and a half years ago. During the pandemic, she, she found us in July. She was a thin little waif, mm-hmm. uh, but very friendly. And we started feeding her and putting weight back on her. And then uh, one day in October of 2020, it was a rainy day, and I heard her at the back door. I'm like, oh, she wants us to feed her. No, no. 
She walked right into the house. I was like, okay, let me get a, let me get the case. Let me put some cat food in the case. Let's get my 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 parents live downstairs. So I was downstairs talking when this happened, and their cats were on the other side of the house, thankfully. So we closed those doors. You had to make sure she didn't have feline leukemia before they interacted. Yeah, she was good. She didn't even have for an outdoor cat. She had no fleas, no parasites. So, you know, uh, Eric, cat, cats will just leave sometimes. She she may have been owned by somebody. Just said, I don't want because they will do that. They'll just walk yeah, out like yeah. They'll choose their humans. I don't, don't want to live here anymore. Yeah, yep, I don't yeah. want to be here anymore. This sucks. And especially if yeah. you're moving, if you're moving, you always have to pay a lot of attention to your pets because cats will will look at moving as oh they're going. Well, I guess I better go too. And they'll just they'll take off when you're moving. So. That was probably somebody's cat that just like, yeah, yeah I don't think I, I'm going to go live with these people over here for a while. I don't, I don't want to hang out here anymore. Well, it, it was funny because our niece named her within like a week or two. And we would go out in the backyard, Rach and I, and Rach would call her. And you'd hear her from like a block away start crying. And then we'd get closer and closer because wherever she hear like Rach calling for her, she come running and she gets so excited between the yard. She could normally climb it. She was so excited. You had to walk her to the front so she could climb under the gate to come around to our side to come back into the backyard to get food. So when she walked in, it was a done deal. It was like, all right, she's decided. We didn't have to like figure out how we we're going to trap her to bring. Well, she's like, yeah, I'm coming in. I'm like, okay, we're good. We're very good. All right, we'll we'll come back to cat talk a little later. Um, I, first of all, so I just so we got you guys here. Uh, for those who don't know, could just tell us a little bit about uh, Weird Frontiers, just the whole game, and you know the what it's about, and what you know what what it's what it's like and what it's not like, and and then tell us a little bit about about Beans Adventure and the Kickstarter. So first of all, just tell us about tell us about this game. I mean, when I saw this, this was gifted to me, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, I'm supposed to re read that or so. I mean, that's All right, hold on. Uh, hold on, Mike. I'm going to wow. embiggen you. I'm going to embiggen you for a second. All right. Mike, okay. I'm embiggening you. You got to show it off. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. The book. Show the book. Making me big. Oh, Making not me you. Big. We all see you. So so this is a, uh, was there a page count here that, you know, that goes to quadruple digits what or something? What is it, Bert, like no. nine? 980 yeah. something. <laughs> yes. So yeah. it, it is a massive volume. And I'm gonna, and so I haven't played it. I see you guys running at cons all the time. Just, just tell us about the game and how it came about, you know, and all that, all that good stuff for people that might be interested in buying, you know, just getting the game. Yeah, we, um, when, uh, God, I don't know how many years ago. I think it was around 2017 or maybe 18. We had ran DCC uh, for about a year and kind of got tired of it and wanted to do something different. And Weird West was brought up, so. The only thing out at the time was uh, uh, Black Powder, Black Magic, which is a fanzine put out by Eric Hoffman. Uh, and uh, what was the other? I can't remember the other guy. Bert, do you remember? Mm, no? Okay. Not off the top of my head, no. Uh, so anyway, these guys had a couple of zines out, but it really didn't have the depth that we were looking for. So we took a couple of weeks off from the game, and uh, we met back up. I had just made a, a handful of classes, and... It, it kind of started from that. Everybody had a good time with it. So I started taking it on uh, to the con circuit and play testing it. And it just kind of developed and developed and developed. And um, I got the word out to the point to where we finally launched. And uh, then once the campaign was over, it was successful. Uh, I realized that I had stepped into a very deep pool because I had no experience at all with uh, layout, editing, and all the stuff that you need to know to make the book. So. Um, I believe Matt with uh, Mount Hildebrandt was with me initially, but he was getting so busy with uh, DCC that uh, he introduced me to this fellow named Bert. And uh, so Bert and I have had a bromance for I don't know how many years now. He uh, he was really big with uh, getting the book to where it was ready to be put out. And uh, as far as running it, Bert has actually been doing a pretty cool Twitch stream for I don't know how long now, Bert? Oh, we just finished it uh, last month. It ran on the Goodman stream for a year, oh, year wow. and a half, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so how would you describe it, you know, if to someone who's, you know, doesn't know It's your about favorite it. spaghetti western with Cthulhu. <laughs> Compatible so, with yeah, you know. 
Yeah. So kind of kind of covers that, that. Does it kind of cover that Deadlands crowd a little bit? Because I, I I played Deadlands a little bit back in the day. I I liked the concept. I didn't really like the rules that much, but I, I liked the whole inter, the setting and the concept of Deadlands. I was just never a big fan of the game itself. Is this kind of the same? A little bit of the same territory, maybe? Or there, there's definitely overlaps in there. Um, Really, with Weird Frontiers, if you're a DCC fan and you really like that swingy magic system where all kinds of mayhem happens, uh, this is the game for you. Deadlands is an awesome system. Love Shane. Love love his work. Um, it's uh, the Savage World system though is is pretty hmm, precise. Uh, there's a lot less chaos that goes on, even with your exploding dice pools. DCC is just the nature of the game, man, where you get a lot of mayhem. And, uh, yeah, it leads to a lot of fun. I had one guy once, he was at a con, and he said, man, he's like, we love Deadlands. He's like, but he's like, Weird Frontiers is like our, our dark chocolate. He's like, we get to that. And we'll <laughs> so it's like, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. No, I, I got to play at a Shire Con, and it was <laughs> awesome. And, it, and it's funny because, you know, Rach plays a lot of games at, at conventions, and she loves the DCC powered games and has never opened up the book in her life. <laughs> it's just, well, it's just, give me what's on the character sheet, I'll figure it out. DCC well, you know, system, I, I always say that is the best system ever written for convention one shots. It literally is. It, it is. Yeah. I, the first time I ever saw it played, Harley Stroh was at North Texas um, just trying out. I mean, he was just trying it out, trying out the funnels. And it just, everybody was having a blast and nobody had the rules. There weren't any rules even published for it. And it's just a great, that the whole underpinning system of DCC is a great con. It's a great con game. And you, you could take DCC and I think we, uh, there may be four additional mechanics. Like there's a, there's a card mechanic. There's a boons and hex mechanic that goes with chips, but there's really not a lot extra to throw on to uh, the DCC system that makes weird frontiers what it is. And, like Bert was saying, there's just the element of it going off the rails, but in a good way, crazy, chaotic. Um, you're going to get that with Weird Frontiers, uh, whereas I think uh, Deadlands is a little more on the rails, would you say, maybe? Yeah. Okay, so that's probably a good way to put it. I just, uh, it, it plays uh, fast and loose, and it plays quickly, I got to say that. You know, you're not you're not stuck uh, wondering what you're going to do next. You get caught up in the action. And, well, I'll, uh, I'll say that we we ran a game. It was I think two years ago. It was at North Texas, and I had Levi Combs and usual okay. cast of characters. But it was an all Luchador. Luchador is one of the classes that are in the game. But it was an all Luchador adventure that oh I had done. God. It was kind of a tip of the hat to From Dust Till Dawn. So mm -hmm. when you see Levi Combs put on a luchador mask and pull his shirt off, you know every you con. Know. I see that. I see that every time he turns into a con. So I don't, yeah, that's that's I before the that. alcohol starts flowing. Yeah, so that, it's always a blast with those guys. But yeah, that 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 was one of the more memorable moments. I think probably the first year that I really had got to hang out a little bit with Levi. So he, he's a super awesome. He's guy. a great guy. He's great. So somebody set up here with Gunn said, uh, did you have to watch a lot of Westerns? Which one's your biggest inspiration? I'm, I'm a gigantic Spaghetti Western fan. Ever since I was, well, when I, I was like, I don't remember how many years old when I saw Once Upon a Time in the West. And I was just like, Charles Bronson is my favorite actor of all time. You know, Peter, or, or, or Henry Fonda, who I didn't even know who he was. I was so young. He's the best villain of all. I mean, I just thought that was the greatest movie I had ever seen in my young life when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And from there, I went on to discover Clint Eastwood's Spaghetti Westerns. And just, I mean, I'm just a huge fan of the genre. So give us some of your inspirations here. Uh, with me, um, it was, you know, once once I kind of committed to it, I'll be honest with you, other than the the, I guess the, the more Western movies of the day, I hadn't seen a lot of the older ones that were out. So it was like, there's this trove of movies and, 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 and whatnot to dive, dive into. So big Eastwood fan. I love, especially the good, the bad, the ugly, if you oh, know yeah, more. Pale Rider. I mean, those yeah, are just yeah. awesome flicks, but the deeper you get into it, the more you see, you know, once upon a time in the West, 310 to Yuma, you know, the original. So mm -hmm. movies are, you could take just about any movie 
that's a western uh and turn it into uh, weird frontiers or you know any kind of western rpg adventure and i think that's really cool with just some tweaks so there was a lot of that uh, musically there's a there's a lot of what they call dark country that's out now if, if any of you guys that are watching have uh, spotify there's a actual playlist for weird frontiers and it's got hours upon hours oh and that's, thanks for, well i thank you for letting me know I yeah and i, I listen to that like i yeah. I can't tell you how many hours. When I was writing, that's what I was listening to. So, I don't know, Bert, what would you say? Apple Music's got it, too, and same thing. It's in my playlist. So they've got, like, three compilation albums of some amazing stuff in it. But as far as movies, I like I'm I like the old school. I like where that there was that nice little meshing between, like, Akira Kurosawa, Japanese samurai flicks and westerns. It kind of just really yeah. had a cross there for a while. And the uh, Sergio Leone, the Italian westerns. Man, I loved those as a kid. Grew up on those. Oh, God, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh, once, I yeah. once I discovered that genre, well, this is before Cable or Blockbuster, and we're talking the 70s, I would just sit there on Saturday. Saturdays was kind of Western Day on our local affiliate station here and i would just look for westerns you know i because and of course some i didn't like you know but but anything with clint eastwood obviously was like oh yeah that's that's it but then you know sometimes you get these ones that i didn't know at the time they were spaghetti westerns you know like you know this is there's something different about these these westerns they're not like the john wayne stuff man or the jimmy no. Stewart stuff they're these are these are these are weird man these are you know you know and so yeah high plains drifter you know i'm seeing that going what the hell is going on I'm like you know 12 years old 13 years old going oh man this is blowing my mind so yeah i anything with that genre i'm i'm in 100 percent i'm i'm also actually a huge red dead redemption fan if you guys are video game guys and uh even play, they had a, play the zombie version or just yeah i'm gonna say that so that's when that was my favorite one was the uh red dead redemption undead that that's cool man and that's that's a dark game and it you know that's if, if you're if you're with fortune is anything like that i'm i'm always in on that so oh, yeah. and that, that's a really really great video game this the sad thing is is there's not a lot of actual weird west movies that, that hold up very well there's a few good ones but if you're looking for an actual, you know, horror slash western movie, there's a few out there that are pretty good, but most of them are, are pretty, pretty dank. Yeah, I think the last one I remember that was really big was Cowboys and Aliens, which is which could have been better. I think it was okay. It was it was weird, but it you know it was I don't know it was more of a traditional western I guess, but it, it did have some weird when the aliens there it had the aliens obviously that was weird so that that kind of fit in the genre I guess a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I can't think of a lot of really good, you know, I mean, you get more stuff like Silverado, you know, than you do, you know, Cowboys and Aliens. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mule's talking about Bone Tomahawk. That, that does, oh, yeah, that that's doesn't great. make you cringe as a male than. Oh, that's a great movie too. Yeah. <laughs> that last scene is just horrific. All right. So, who did the internal art here? Because we got to cast the characters on the screen. Yeah, we have. Uh, what we're looking at right now is a gentleman named Marson. Uh, he goes by Marson S. Uh, I'd probably would die if I tried to actually pronounce his last name. I think it's Polish Siloni. I think's his name. But he's actually in the UK as well, and uh, he he kind of came on board midway through finishing up Weird Frontiers and. Uh, I try and keep him on board. I, I love his style. I think he's got kind of a really cool, yeah, um, style about him. And he he's real good at drawing the characters of the the NPCs in each adventure. So we've got him. Uh, we also we used uh, Christopher Torres. Uh, Torres is really good. The map right there was done by Davin Klutz, uh, and he's he. I think he's really every time he turns something in, it just gets better and better. But Davin's. I think he's doing some work now for uh, Goodman Games as well. Uh, so we got uh, Davin on cartography and Steve Kane, of course, with our cover. Uh, Zon D, I think I mentioned him. He actually did a cover for uh, one of the stretch goals. Actually, two. He did Nest of Snakes and uh, Never Swallow the Worm. But he's got a really cool style. I, I love uh, turning him loose on some things. But he's an Australian was, based artist. Yeah. Holy. You know, what's kind of cool is that, you know, I, I remember, I don't know if you guys know very much about the old Boot Hill modules that came out for TSR. You know, that they had the regular stable of artists do the art there. And there's some 
kick-ass pieces by like Elmore and Holloway and Easley, who I don't think ever did westerns before or during or since that. And they did yeah. some great pieces, so it's kind of cool to see these artists turn loose in a western genre setting and see how they can, you know, see what they can come up with. One of the cool things about the Kickstarter, and I, Bert can chime in on this, is the uh, the art lover pledge level is something that I wanted to do to try and get back to some of the artists. So you can actually pledge, and all that pledge goes to the artists along with a piece of original art. Have we? Have we? Have I think they're all sold yeah. out now. Oh, I, okay. I don't think there are oh, any well. levels left. Yeah. Yeah, so that's something I think is kind of cool. Um, you know, I'll probably Very be doing down the road as well. So if you, you you hit that that pledge level, you'll actually get a piece of the art used in the adventure, and all that that money is just kind of extra going back towards the artist to thank them for helping me out by working with me. Hmm. So tell He's us about this. Uh, tell about the Steve Bean guy. Does he have any chops or what's his deal? Steve, you know uh, he, scroll uh, down for his bio. Keep going. I know, I saw <laughs> yeah, we could read his bio. I think we'd be here another way. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading it right now. I, I didn't realize he's done so much in the, in the industry. I'm deal. like, holy shit. He's, he's got all of kinds of deal. skins of the wall. Yeah. Yeah, he actually wrote uh, one of the. There's two adventures in the main rule book. Um, so many people are pulling muscles trying to lift, but he did one of the adventures in the rule book. And uh, while we were kind of uh, hashing that out, he agreed to do an additional adventure as well. So um, it's been how many years, Bert, since? Ah, man. Five, six? Yeah, this has been, a, <laughs> it's been quite the, the journey between uh, with me and Bert. But uh, Steve, he probably turned it in not long after um, we got the Kickstarter going as far as uh, fulfillment. So it's just taken a while for us to... Yeah, it was a, a big adventure. Uh, you know, we had a lot of, of trial and error and some of those moments, you know, a lot of stress. But um, so everything's a little late, but we've got a lot of stuff on the shelf ready to rock. And the first, of course, is uh, our Last Stop Perdition by Steve Bean. He was a great guy and a good writer. So, so when you guys are, so, you know, you, you, you write a game, you come up with a game, you do the Kickstarter What's it like when you see people are running into conventions, and especially if you don't know the guy, you're just like looking through a convention program and like, crap, somebody's running Weird Frontiers. This is awesome. I mean, it's, what's uh, that feeling like? First off, I got to get Bert at a convention. I've been I've been trying to figure out the, the best way yes. to, to get him, and I think North Texas would probably North be a Texas. Good start. Yes, yeah. you got to come North Texas, dude. It's when you have a it, homestead and you have animals. It's kind of hard to get away. <laughs> Bring the goose. You guys will let her bring them. Bring, 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 bring the goats. Cool. Bring, bring all the animals. It'll be, it'll be awesome. be cats. cats will be running up and down the halls. It'll be awesome. It's Dallas. Come on. Yeah, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's, uh, it, it, you know, it, for me, it's just you kind of forget that it's out. I mean, I, I, I was going to cons before this even was thought of. So when you when you walk in and up for, for – an example last year at long con i was walking towards the, the the main room there where they have the defenders set up as well and there was a game of weird frontiers being played and it's just it, it still is a weird feeling for me um I, I don't like being in the limelight so to speak or or you know having a big deal made out of anything so when someone's like man i really love this game i kind of cringe a little bit because it's just kind of a i don't know so you're waiting for the feeling. but <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So when you see people sitting at the table and you see the cards and the chips, and it's uh, it, you can't really get a better feeling as a gamer to see <laughs> something that you've created, you know, with the help of a lot of people out there uh, in the industry and, and fans that have thought enough of, of what you did to, to push it at their table. So it's it's an awesome feeling. And for me, it's... Um... So did I do my job as an editor well enough that this person can take a module with no <laughs> cues for me and be able to run it without any questions? Or how smoothly did it run? How many times did you have to flip pages? Did I put enough references in there to the judge so that this document can be ran without any pointers from you know the, the writer or the team? It, it's always interesting for me to see, like, where, where did you stumble? What did you have to keep looking up? Could I have made that easier? Yeah, I'd say one of the, the the hardest things if you want to do something like this, if you're like thinking about creating something or trying to get something out there, is finding somebody good to help you get there. And I struck gold with Mr. Burt. So don't reach out to him. Don't contact him for anything. He's <laughs> mine. <laughs> 
You're not sharing. Okay. No, I'm not sharing it. <clears throat> no, I, I thought it was one of those modern relationships. Come on. You're supposed to, it's, it's supposed to be okay with No, I'm, I'm yeah. kidding. You guys reach out because he, he does. Yeah. <laughs> As someone in the chat says, too late. Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on a lot of projects. <laughs> yeah, I, look, I always tell people if you if you're looking to do something and you need some contacts, whether it be art, you know, layout, editing, feel free to reach out to me. I'm easy to reach, and I'm very happy to help you. Because if I didn't have people helping me, I would have never got where I'm at right now. Well, you know, people forget that this isn't a zero sum industry where if you do something. That means that somebody else can't do it because you've taken away, I don't know, the potential resources or the potential sales. That's not how this works. And as a community, we are stronger for helping each other. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I'm. It never ceases to amaze me when somebody starts talking in on Facebook, or whatever, about something they want to work on. The people that will come up and offer advice or just say, "Hey, reach out to me uh, if if you need some help." and uh, learning in design or whatever uh, layout program and you know that's people giving of themselves their own time and it's awesome and i i think that many people forget how how close this community can be when it comes to creativity and sharing and helping it's it's awesome to, to to be a I'm mostly a bystander these days, but it's it's awesome to see that and and is to see that desire to help just materialize. Yeah. It's really and, good. and a lot of the people who helped me were like when you look at the stretch goal adventures, you got Brendan LaSalle, Michael Curtis, Harley Stroh, Bob Brinkman. I mean, you know, those guys got a lot on their plate. So to, mm -hmm. to, for them to right. take the time to help me get to that point. To where the book's out, but also to write adventures, you know, to help the game. That's just, it speaks volumes and, and who those guys are. <clears throat> definitely. Definitely. I mean, that's, and so it's that, not, go ahead. I was just going to say the, the, the piece of art that you've got out right now, that's mm -hmm. really cool because uh, Bert and I were kind of kicking it back and forth and we're like, why don't we take one of the smaller adventures, um, you know, that we've got waiting and, and maybe saddle it up to, you know, steve's adventure or, or in the future we may do that as well so we're hoping we can hit the stretch goal um but this is a really cool adventure uh and uh i, I hope that we can we can hit the funding to get it in there uh, oh, that or, or, well, uh, I, I think well you, you're gonna hit it it looks good now so i think you're i think you're okay yeah so the second adventure is uh it's almost a palate cleanser it is it's an awesome <laughs> adventure uh, it's much it's much shorter and can pretty much be played in two to three hours. I think in my play test we got done in just a little over three hours, but my 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 folks tend to putter around a lot when we game. Um, the first module, so last stop perdition, it, there it's dense. There is a lot of material there, and while it is an adventure that you can play, and it took us about four hours to do the play test on it. Um, there is enough material there that you can make a mini campaign out of this. If you want your group to stick around the Utah territory where it's based, there is there's a villain, uh, the, the cult that you have to deal with. There is a, a significant problem that's going on. And the train that you're boarding uh, is the powers that be have figured out this is the easiest way they can deal with their, their is undead problem. We'll call it that. They're shuttling uh, souls to through the near to their various paradises because this cult is causing them to not be able to cross over and there aren't enough of that particular you know character class that allows a soul to pass over there aren't enough of them to go around for the problem the size that utah is facing so there is a plethora of information there that's kind of in the front of the module you might you know, reading through it, you're like, why do I need these four pages of information and background to run this adventure? Well, you don't. But if you wanted to base a, a fairly long campaign in this area, that will get you what you need. If you remember the old TSR modules where they gave you a, just a snippet, just enough to get, you know, the appetite going, just to give you ideas of what you could do in the area. That's what like the first four pages of this module is. Um, and there's a lot going on. It's a train adventure. So, you know, timing, <laughs> there are stops that hit certain time points and things happen in between. Um, 
And so Mountain Devils is, it's not as, uh, it's not, it, it's less compact. It's more a straight ahead, let's go, let monster of the week, let's go slay this thing sort of adventure. And I think the two pair together really well. So we'd really like to hit that stretch goal. Mountain Devils is about another 20 pages worth of adventure. Written by Lee Nielsen, who is another UK Weird Frontiers fan who's been been with us since the beginning as far as pushing it at cons over there at UK Expo and some of the other cons. So it, Lee is like, he's like me. I, I was terrified of Sasquatch as a kid. Um, I, I love to read about him and anything I could find. You, you guys remember that? Um, most of the folks probably watching this may be a little bit too young, but... Do you guys remember the the creature from Boggy Creek? You remember the yes, movie? Boggy. So let me, yeah. I got a story about Boggy Creek monsters. So when that movie came out, our local theater was so full that they were letting <laughs> people in to sit in the aisles because really? they were sitting on the ground. Because dude, Texas Boggy Creek, you know, especially near the east eastern Texas where you got the the border with Arkansas and Louisiana, but. Sasquatch, Boggy Creek Monster, that's gigantic here in Texas. I mean, that's huge. Every, everybody has a story about, oh, my grandma, she shot a gun at the Boggy Creek Monster. I mean, everybody's <laughs> got a story about that. So, yes, when I, growing up, the Boggy Creek Monster was a staple of my, you know, my nightmares. Let's put it that way. You didn't stay out late because the Boggy Creek Monster might grab your ass well, and my, you know, uh, drag you off. My dad, my mom and dad divorced now as a, a, a babe, but... Um, so every weekend I had to spend the weekend with him, and he lived on a mountain in a, a semi-finished house, and they oh, slept boy. with all the windows open. And so here I was, you know, a Bigfoot fanatic, but I, anytime I would, I just knew he was going to snatch me out of a window and carry me off. <laughs> so, you know, Lee, this guy in the UK, evidently they have, I don't know what you call the Sasquatch over there, but so he's written this adventure, um, and it's based on a creature called the Skookum which is kind of what I would see Bigfoot actually being. They have the ability to change into different uh, animals. Yeah, and they yeah, can actually Skook, Skook them, they're, they're real big in Appalachian lore. That's a huge... Yeah. Uh, I, I study a lot of Appalachian folklore stuff, and that's the Skookum is gigantic in that. They do, Like you said, they're they're scary because they can change shape into people yeah. you know and, and get you to come over to a campfire or something. So the, the, the Appalachianers used to have all these rituals they'd go through if you're traveling to the mountains and you met somebody at a fire you had to ask certain questions and they had to reply to you certain ways because it could be a skookum and you know and you sit down and you're like oh yeah i'm gonna hang out with this that's guy. awesome you know, man i can't that lore what a skookum is is in the module of, yeah. oh wow okay. it's also yeah. a third I'm, level I'm module in, and a uh, really rough fight for third level characters Oh, I'm so. <laughs> interested in that's i love i love that stuff like that uh there's a there's an old pulp writer named manly wade wellman who um, he's actually in the appendix in with for his uh, Silver John stories, and I'm a gigantic Silver John fan. As a matter of fact, I just spent a hundred bucks a few months ago to buy the, oh, wow. the 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 latest complete Silver John. It's got all the novels and all the story. It's it's a beautiful hardcover edition. Oh, that's awesome, man! But like yeah, I'm, I'm a huge Silver John, manly way well. But he was an Appalachian guy, and he wrote all his books would talk about Appalachian lore and so I was like I don't understand what he's talking about so when I was a kid I'd read about this stuff and you know back then of course you didn't have Google didn't have the internet so I'm in the library looking for books about skookums and <laughs> Appalachian folklore and stuff and it, it's pretty spooky man that Appalachian stuff gets creepy as hell so that, you that's ever, cool have you ever had the opportunity to actually go and listen to an Appalachian storyteller um, it, it's, no, it's a vocation awesome. around here oh, I'm in Virginia boy. Um, oh yeah you're right yeah, yeah you're, you're the belly of the beast man that's awesome and we that still have great. them around here they'll uh we're pretty close to virginia tech the college and uh, they they have guests come in storytellers that it's traditional like uh, they learned it from their parents and from their wow. parents before them it's amazing the lore that's still kept up in the area the, the appalachian mountains and you probably know this bird i mean they're the oldest mountains in the world and they're so old that they're they're ground down. They're not as mm -hmm. big as like other mountains in the world because that's how it was like 50 billion years. Old. I don't know. It's some crazy number, but they are the, that is the oldest mountain range in the world. And one time they were higher than Mount Everest. 
but that's how long the elements have been working on them. So there is all kinds of creepy ass stuff in those woods, man. I, I I don't think I'd watch. I'd like to walk the Appalachian Trail because I'd run into something creepy <laughs> out there. If Sasquatch or Boggy Creek or Skook, something would get me. You know, maybe just maybe just your garden variety serial killer. I don't know. You know. You know, I'll look up the there. statistics to see how many people still go missing around here every year. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, then yeah. you just convinced me. I'm never, be, yeah, I'm never going out. There's no way. No way on earth. Yeah, so we, we really like this adventure as well. So I, I ran it up. I actually ran it at Long Con. And the, uh, the element of, of having a scoop and potentially jump in the body of one of the characters, and then you play that element to where, you know, is, is, is there something in you? You're acting a little weird. That can really get. <laughs> Oh yeah, here we go, Joe George. Uh, Wait, yeah, that actually was there? that was the monster oh, that you fought. Cool. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. It's kind of like when you're playing D and D, and the one character you have to take him aside and tell him he's a doppelganger now, and he's like either, "Oh man, this sucks," or like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna get the rest of the party. <laughs> man, this is awesome," <laughs> you know. So yeah, that's that's kind of the same uh, same uh, concept there. It's cool. Nice. Well, that's cool, Ben. Like I didn't realize you were a. Uh, a a bit of a cryptid uh, dude i have all kinds of facets to my crazy i'm not just a drunk i'm i'm i have other things too I, you know i'm not just a drinking weirdo you know baseball fan no i yeah i, I that's something i got when i was a little kid i got interested because i i somehow found the silver john stories in my library i don't know why they had them but they had them in my library and i was just fascinated with it and i i got this guy um jan brunvald i don't know if you guys ever heard of him he's a folklorist he probably he's probably one of the best known folklorists in the united states and he wrote a book called the vanishing hitchhiker and basically what his study is he studies urban legends and so i got into him way back in like 80 81 and was just fascinated by in a different life i would go major in folklore which probably makes even less money than majoring in english because about as so, much as you know running an rpg company they, you know they get <laughs> yeah so, there you go you know, it, but it's just such a fascinating because what jan brunvall does and I, i'm sure a lot of folklorists do is they trace these stories and a lot of them go all the way back to europe you know because the european settlers came over and they brought their stories with them you know and texas has a lot of because people don't know texas has a lot of czechoslovakians germans polish and we, we you know that's why we have we have a huge um um, Oktoberfest in the south, southern part of the state. A lot, of, a lot of those cities are all they're, they're old Czech cities or old German cities. We have German Czech, we have German cathedrals in Texas. People don't know about that. You go, you'll be driving to this little town. There's this giant cathedral. You're like, what the hell? And it's because a German, you know, a whole a whole city came over from Germany to Texas. They bought land there and they started this little city. And so yeah, so we we get a lot of those folk war things in Texas too, but. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a huge anything like that. I'm a huge fan, and I'm a big obviously a big Call of Cthulhu fan too, Lovecraft fan. So I, you know, it's a huge tradition of like hedge lore, like uh, minor magics that came from all of that too. That yeah, uh, yeah, all but forgotten in our history of like the old west and the settlers, but it's definitely a part of it. Look back then, you got to think about the old west. You know, I, I mean. You're on a horse and you're traveling for days. Maybe you don't see anybody for a while. You know, when weird shit happens, you don't know what's going on. You know, you see lights in the sky or, you know, you hear weird noises at night. And and you're just, you know, you're going to assign any number of weird shit, cryptid things to whatever's going on out there. And, you know, there was that that, that's, that had to be kind of a creepy, lonely life out there on the range, you know. So I, I think that the, the weird West genre is kind of cool. And, oh, I'm also a big fan of Jonah Hex comics when i was a kid too yeah. that that was that real weird western kind of you know kind of slant to his stories too i, I love the old original jonah hex stuff so stay away from the movie oh yeah say, I, I've I've heard you, I, I didn't like the movie's okay with uh, me I mean, i've seen a lot worse yeah well fair fair <laughs> No, the old comics are great they're great though the old comics are great because he's 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 just a He's just an honorary, deformed, weird, you know, weird dude. And, and of course, he's great with a gun and, you know, takes on all comers with his gun. Has And that has some great lines. I still remember, remember one of the comics. Uh, they did, they shot a bunch of guys and this woman walks out. and goes, did you have to kill them all? He goes, hell, ma'am, buzzards got to eat too. 
<laughs> I always remember that line. That's a great one. So yeah, that's I. I you know, this whole genre is just. I I gotta get one of your games, man. Next time you get a game in a con, I'm I'm gonna try to slip in there because I. This sounds like this hits my now, sweet spot. Are you spot. gonna wear a luchador mask and go shirtless? No, I will not do that. I will not wear a luchador <laughs> mask. I, I'll leave that to Levi because we'll go shirtless though. I mean, he didn't. He didn't I, mention I probably that. Do that yeah, I do that right now. Even I mean, I was gonna say uh, no, you, no, you, no. You've no. done worse at the the auctions in North Texas, haven't you? What happens after midnight though is a different. <laughs> that's a different answer than what happens during the con itself. And, uh, and Mike stays clothed. It's his brother that has... Uh, yeah, yeah. my brother has the has the weird, you know, fetish of exhibitionists. So, you know, not bring your <laughs> alcohol and come as a hellbilly. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this sounds like a great Kickstarter, man. I, I, and it also sounds... What's cool about it is... I, I, I mean, I've I've used a lot of DC stuff with regular D and D, or just you know, converted it pretty easily. It's really not hard to convert. It sounds like you could convert this to a lot of Western games. Oh yeah, very easy. Um, most of the uh, most of the bestiary was taken from uh, folklore from you know various regions. So it's not like we've made up a ton of, of of different you know unique creatures. Most of that stuff you you'll get out of folklore, which. Mm -hmm. he's, he's made a few snide comments, I think, talking about my face. Brandon Garinger's in the room. <laughs> uh, usually I try and ignore him so he'll go away, but he, Brandon actually contributed a lot mm. to the bestiary and some of the magic mm. in the uh, in the Weird Frontiers rulebook as well. So, Oh, there he is. Yep. <laughs> RPG yeah, like, overuse. It shows yeah, like, uh, like the, even the Wild Wild West <clears throat> is kind of uh, in the DNA of this game because we've got your, uh, your steampunk mad scientists oh, yeah. that are in here yeah. too. Uh, the train like itself is uh, a contraption created by. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I watched Wild Wild West. Yeah. You guys asked, you know, some of the, I guess, influences. Like I, I went and bought the, the box set, watched all those. I used to watch them as a kid. You know, when you got home from school, there was a few things. Oh yeah. That would be on TV, and that was one of the the, the few things. It was actually really cool. I think. You know, the, Paladin's a TV kids show. Are that was one. Kids, kids are missing that nowadays because you know back then you had to watch what was ever on TV. You didn't have all this cable <laughs> or, or you know like I've got Roku now. I've got like a thousand Roku channels, yeah. and some are like Crime Channel or the you know I mean they have channels that's just like the Wild Wild West channel or something. And you didn't have that. I mean, you just had to watch what on TV, so you didn't know what you were in for. You just you just flipped it on when you got home from school, and the Wild Wild West is on. You didn't know what was going on. I mean, is it going to be a great episode? Is it not or whatever? And once you watched it, you might not see it again. I, I don't know. You might not see it for 10 years. So yeah. it was a different world back then. You just had to kind of be happy with what you got on TV. So we were you were lucky when you got something good like that, you know, instead of I Love Lucy or, you know, All in the <laughs> Family. You, you definitely wanted Wild Wild West to pop on there yeah. you know, rather than something else. I grew up on military bases and a lot of them back in that time. We had three channels, Armed Forces <laughs> Network, and they were curated. So we'd wow. have like Doctor Who marathons in the middle of the night. We'd have like Black Belt Theater <laughs> in the middle of the day. Oh, We'd have uh, awesome. Gunsmoke back-to-back -back episodes. And that's how I grew up watching television. The other yeah, one, we had PBS. Cool. We had PBS. And uh, the other, I forget what the other mixed channel was. There was a lot of uh, a lot of daytime soaps. I remember watching a lot more Dallas than I care to uh, <laughs> have stuck in my, my skull, you know? <laughs> Dude, we didn't even watch Dallas in Dallas because we were like, "That's the dumbest show ever." If you lived in Dallas, <laughs> you're just like, "Oh my, oh my God!" This and and the little known fact about Dallas is it wasn't actually all filmed. It wasn't filmed in Dallas. They they would they would come to the beginning of the season. They'd film about six weeks location shots. Then they'd go to L.A. and film the rest of it, and then just throw in a location shot. So uh, we, we'd always just roll our eyes like, "Oh God, Dallas!" Wasn't is there a, a copy of the Dallas role playing game that? was bought or bought for Mike Curtis and he was supposed to run a session. So he, so that he did. So, so the Dallas RPG board game, whatever, there was a challenge made to him once that, that he had to try to run that as an event at North Texas. He did. He did, did he? one year. Yeah, he actually did. He ran it. I, I, <laughs> the only people I know that played it were Mike and Liz Stewart. You have to ask them how it, how it came out. It, I just got the, Everybody thought it was really weird. Let's just put it that way. It was very, it, it turned out to be very weird. But yeah, he actually did, he actually rose to the challenge and ran it as an RPG at one of the sessions. Yeah, I think that was, so. I think that must have been 2013. Because my was a first, while ago. North, yeah, yeah my, my first North Texas was 2014. And I believe that was the Michael Curtis game that I was supposed to be in. 
uh, yeah. along with a bunch of others uh, right. for a Saturday night game. Yeah, I and, think when that's all, right. and when we all and when we we all got there, uh, Mike was like, "Listen, I I feel like shit. I am so run down." That's the year he got <laughs> sick. Yes, I, I couldn't. I guess yeah. so. And I, I, and like you know, Rich LeBlanc was was it part? You know, we were all and it's like, do you, do you mind if we skip this and just go to the bar? And we were like, <laughs> the bar it is. Okay, <laughs> we were all we're gonna drink, drink, drink instead. Again. Let's just drink. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, you know, it never, like, so it never happened then. Truth is out. Well, he ran it one year. He, I don't think he ran it. He was a year he before he ran it. Yeah, he, he ran it one year because Mike and Liz played the game. That's like I said, I had to, I'd have to ask them how that turned out. But it was, it was very. Everybody's comments were real. Like, yeah, it was really weird, man. It was really weird. So, all right, because you know. <laughs> it's not really meant to be a role playing game. It's more of a board game, I guess, with some role playing elements. Kind of like the remember the I, you know played the old All My Children game from TSR was. More of a board game, but kind of if you knew the soap opera, you could kind of roll. It was weird. That was a weird game too. So, what was TSR thinking back then? I don't, you know. uh, I don't know what they were thinking. Oh come on! Well, he did Rocky and Bullwinkle. I mean, I'm come on! Why that. not do Dallas? Che- they, did, they did Cheers. They did the they did the Honeymooners. I mean, it just got off on some tangents, man. Uh, yeah. Uh oh! Michael, Michael Curtis right now asking him if he actually. Oh, oh Lord! What? There he is, the kitchen. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy he's, good, he's about to tell on you, hey. David. All your secrets are what? about to be released. By a pricking of your thumb, something kitchen this way comes. Uh oh! By oh. the way, folks, as, as we trans as we transition, that's Ooh, kind of interesting. Long. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, there's a link in the bottom of the screen. It's been up for the last like 45, 50, 55 minutes. 10 cards tavern.game slash perdition. It'll take you right to the Kickstarter. But you know what? I'll even, I'll even put it into the chat so you mm. don't have to like type it in. So, so, so just let you know, Jim Jim threatened me with bodily harm if I didn't let him on the show <laughs> because he's such a fan of you guys and the game. And and Jim's a very gentle man. He doesn't usually threaten me. I mean, usually he just bribes me, which is fine. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take the bribe. But no, this time it was actually you know threat of torture, and so I said, "Oh, definitely." So, definitely. so you know, let's let's talk about why let's talk about why you should fund this Kickstarter, right? So, so first of all, we all know the Kickstarters that have failed. You know, where you're going to make Sparkly Unicorn Patrol, and if you just give me a hundred thousand dollars, I swear to God, I'll write it as soon as I collect the check, and I swear I'll write it. Right, we all know those Kickstarters. Unicorn Patrol. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, Sparkly <laughs> Unicorn Patrol. My, my next then, idea for, for yeah. You know, and then there's, you know, the musing of the musings of famous game designer, which, you know, there's going to be 32 of those Kickstarters, and it's mm. like a subscription that never ends. But but let's talk about people that actually deliver a product, and not only do they deliver a product, they actually deliver something that's, God help us, been play tested, and hundreds of people have had a chance to experience before they ever dare raise their hand and ask for money. And and so I want to talk about why that's important and why I I absolutely wanted to be here. Um, I have been privileged enough to know David for, I think, since the first GaryCon is where I met, uh, the first GaryCon that I attended, which was GaryCon 9. And that's the first time that I met David. And one of the things that I kept hearing from people in the DCC community was, oh, you know, have, have you played DCC with clowns? Because there's this guy, and he's got this adventure, and, and it has clowns. Now, now, for the people who are terrified of clowns and who will never, ever, ever touch this adventure, David was like, you know, I should branch out beyond clown-themed horror, and I should do something else. And, and, and so... We all know the West, Wild West, Old West games that have have sort of percolated around on the edges of 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 our periphery of gaming. Some of people have played Boot Hill. Um, you know, Pinnacle had a tremendous amount of set, success. Um, but but really and truly, there had not been anything that really spoke to the mythos and the Old West and shenanigans. And then David managed to create something extraordinary. And it went on Kickstarter. And a lot of people backed 
extraordinary because they'd had a chance to play it at North Texas. They'd had a chance to play it at, uh, at Gary Con. They'd played it other places. And, and that's great. But why should you support this Kickstarter? So you have somebody with a track record who actually shipped the thing that, that he said he would ship. And the production values were amazing, absolutely spectacular. But more importantly, David Beatty's just a decent human being. Um, so, so just cover your ears. I'm going to talk about you, right? <laughs> um, you know, really and truly, let's talk about what makes him an extraordinary human being. Um, the majority of the people that you meet every day will run from danger. And it is very few people in this world that will absolutely override everything about them, everything in their nature, everything that 50,000 years of evolution has programmed into us and run into danger. And David is one of those people. You know, when I found out that he was a fireman, it made perfect sense because here's this soft spoken, wonderful, gentle giant of a guy with this creative bent. And then as if that didn't make him damn near irresistible, by the way, did you know he spends every free moment he can saving cats? Yes, <laughs> not just cats. He saves orphaned kitty cats. And so if you're friends with David Beatty on Facebook, every once in a while you have to endure the most nauseatingly cute pictures of little kittens. And these little kittens need homes. And if they had homes, they would have a better wife. But because you haven't coughed up $10 to help the kitten, this kitten will have a bad wife. Do you want that? And you're like, no, I don't want to have a bad life. I don't want it to have a bad life. I want everything in this kitten's world to be okay. <laughs> and so, and so, I mean, we know no shortage of famous game designers who say things like, do you know who I am? But, but how many game designers do you meet who say, yeah, I made that game, but um, there's Take this cat that had nine kittens. <laughs> And I was really hoping, could you could you do it for the kittens? Could you just do it for the kittens? And uh, and 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 I think again that speaks to character. <coughs> we we have we have few precious dollars to spend on the things that we love. Yep. And we have to choose, right? I mean, I always talk that it's the golden age of, of role playing games, it's the golden age of miniature gaming. 3D printers have opened up things in ways that we never imagined. If you don't have a cool dice tower, it's because you're too lazy. There's a bajillion great dice towers out there, right? Like we just can't imagine how the hobby is gonna be in five years. And so you have to really sort of pick and choose where you put your money. And and I, I heard about tonight, I knew David was gonna be on tonight. And really more than anything else, I was like, you know what? I wanna say something about this because, because we know most of the people that we back their projects every once in a while you try out somebody new but there's no surprises here this isn't one of these kickstarters you're going to back and then later on go oh my god that guy burns kittens why why did i back that guy and i'm here to tell you this guy doesn't this guy doesn't this guy doesn't eat kittens he saves kittens he jumps into fires to save kittens and and if you can't find the time to back his kickstarter if you can't find a few ducats to put aside to back the kickstarter I feel sorry for you, right? Because this is one of those Kickstarters you're going to feel good about backing. You're going to feel good about what you're going to get and all around win-win. And that's what David Beatty brings. You know, he hasn't he hasn't done 32 Kickstarters. He isn't going to write the Kickstarter once he's got the giant bag of cash. You know, David's the real deal. And where I, I Eric... Learned and, I learned that lesson with the first Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and more than anything else, right? Like how many times have we... Have we talked about Kickstarters that uh, it might ship? It no. could ship at some point. <laughs> yes, he is the Sarah McLaughlin of the RPG world. Yes, right? If you hear Sarah McLaughlin music, <laughs> that's what you hear when you see David Beatty. You're like, oh my God, I hear Sarah McLaughlin and I need mm -hmm. to save a kitten. And, and, and that's just it. That's the heart of this. Yes, no, you, you don't get a get free a, kitten. So, yes, you will. You've got to come to South Carolina. What? I, I can line you up. I can like oh you my god I david beatty is like the 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 feline renewable resource king right <laughs> if you were worried that you wouldn't have a kitten you'll be able to get a kitten you just have to drive to south carolina to go get it yeah so you know i'm visiting fam i'm, I'm visiting my stepmom this week and 
And I brought my laptop specifically because I wanted to carve out a little bit of time and just talk about what a decent guy David is and how this is one of those refreshingly decent Kickstarters to back. And and you should tell people, right? Oh, like it's also uh, refreshingly different. No, it's not different, but but decent, right? Like really and truly. I, I mean, I don't mind you doing a cash grab and being honest about it, right? We want filthy lucre. We want to swim like Scrooge McDuck in our giant Kickstarter. Okay, Brandon Sanderson, that's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> but Ouch. you know, how about how about we back projects that are just, you know, somebody put a lot of heart into it. Somebody put a lot of thought into it. Somebody isn't going to bring it to you in a half developed form. And then, oh, by the way, my next Kickstarter will fix all the problems from the first Kickstarter. Um, you know, crowdfunding is perilous. Like crowdfunding's tap dancing in, in my minefield. And and this is one of those where you get to feel great about it. And, and that's it. Awesome. And Very I have everything a question, is true. Yeah. Um, a lot of people that don't attend cons regularly uh, you may not know that Jim Kitchen is the mouth of the RPG Mafia. He uh, he is always uh, keeping the crowds laughing and going while he's selling, or not selling, but taking bits on merchandise. It's most of the stuff we would love to have that we used to have when we were like 12 or 13 years old. But uh, Jim's got away with, uh, with the word. And I was just going to ask you on air, Jim, if when I do kick the bucket, will you raffle my ashes at North Texas Con? <laughs> oh, oh, listen. If, if that opportunity comes around, I can assure you, my friend, mm. you, will be, you will be front row center yeah. for some shenanigans. I can't think of right? a better way to go out than to have Jim kick Well, you know, may, maybe we should start collecting ashes because, you know, we have Doug's ashes. <laughs> That we, yeah. we bring to the con every year. It's in an hourglass, and I've already got permission from my wife to put mine next to Doug's. Maybe we should just have a murderer's row of ashes of all the <laughs> the, the biggest fans of North Texas. You know, yeah. I I you know I oh god. So so <laughs> let's just turn this back, right? Like, and 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 really and truly, when I found out that Dave, Peter. when I found out that yes, I know when Dave, when I found out that David $5. was was yeah, five dollar, I get five dollars for ashes. <laughs> When I found out that Dave, uh, when I found out that Dave was a firefighter, I was like, okay, that makes total sense. And then I friended him on Facebook, and then it's just, it, it's like I've subscribed to the virtual Cat Fancy magazine, right? It's just this never-ending, like, have you seen this kitty? This kitty needs a home. This kitty loves DCC, but this kitty has DCC. no dice. Oh, this dear. kitty needs dice. Oh, that's a, tra a tragedy. It these is a tragedy. These comments are killing me. I think How we've, started killing a raffle. You? we've started a raffle for everybody's ashes. Oh, God. I had, I had to bid on my own ashes just to get the price up. He's going to pick my own ashes here. Minimum bid is one buck, all right? You can't. No, so, 75 cents. So, no. Skeeter's trying so to throw David, 75 cents. David, where's the Kickstarter right now? Uh, you well, launched, we have, right? We, we spoke about this a little bit. We, we funded, but the problem with that is we had a $3,000 pledge. Uh, for a twenty dollar book, <laughs> and it's from uh, Brazil. So the the person mm -hmm. who backed has one Kickstarter under their belt. So I'm um, I'm suspecting either somebody's trying to deep six us, or maybe just have some fun. I don't know. But so what I expect to happen is probably the last forty eight hours that that pledge will probably be taken out. I can't sure. cancel it. Unfortunately, there's there's not a way for the the campaign creator to cancel a pledge, even if you got good reasons. So, so, so what I'm hearing is, is you really need to get this up around the 12 K mm -hmm. mark. And then that way we've got enough of a buffer. It should be okay. Yeah. yeah we're hoping that, you know, the, the last, the last few days are, you know, usually pretty good activity. So we're hoping that at least if that uh, pledge is, is taken away, that we'll still fund the, the book. So it would be nice to do a <clears> traditional <throat> printed book um, rather than go the, the, the POD. Uh, route because you know, obviously you guys know it's a little better quality when you oh i'm a way. physical guy this whole virtual thing scares me i think the internet's a fad man the internet's just mm. totally a fad i just you know so so david i don't know what do you think of watsy you got anything you want to throw out because because <laughs> we haven't gotten any hate mail yet i mean the night's yeah, young yeah. we gotta see you gotta work on it yeah come on somebody somebody in wisconsin is stewing right now i need to send some hate mail I gotta write some hate mail. See you know, well, they 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 didn't do anything stupid this week, though, which is shocking. I, I know you're gonna hit but, shocked, but uh, you know it's it's they managed after last year's 
just absolute, you know, chest kiss of a year of pissing people off every single week. They've they've toned it back now to maybe every two or three weeks. I I um, tell you what, though, Mike, you and I discussed this yesterday. What I think is really interesting is, um, yeah, John at Dork Tower, man, they like kicked his puppy. I don't know what it is, but every other day he's been on a tear. It's an it's absolute personal John. tear. It is, is personal, going on, right? Man, he's like, after it. I mean, I mean, whatever kittens that Dave has given away, if you back the Kickstarter, like, what's he stepped on John Kovlak's puppy? And you're just like, whoa, why is he so angry? And every day, it isn't just like a, every one of them is a body blow, right? I, I feel like I'm watching Foreman just take apart Ali. And I'm just like, wow, this is the rumble in the jungle. And it's not going well. It's not going well. Well, was Jesus. he at Gary Con? We should have asked him at Gary Con what was going on because I feel like he, I feel like we need to have him on, and we need to just uh, you know I'd like you to show me on the player's handbook where Watsy hurt you. <laughs> like I just don't understand what happened. This is bad. Here, I want you to go through the monster manual and show me which one that, that they set you up on the blind date with. But this clearly went badly. This went so bad. But by the so way, bad. this this has a connection too to this project because Eric and I are huge into promoting. What, what, what we call the OSR, which is basically small publishers, and that's where your money should be going right now. Yes. If you are playing games, absolutely yes. should be going to small publishers. Yes, you should not be going to multinational corporations that have pissed all over our mem our, our wonderful memories that we have when we were children. No, these are the kind of guys right here that you should be supporting. This is would the future you, of the gaming. Right would now. you like to support? <laughs> The corporate lord of hate, or would you like a kitten? I mean, it's <laughs> really it's a it's a choice. I, you don't, I defy, I defy Beatty. After this episode, I defy Beatty to send out a backer update that's nothing but a <laughs> bunch of cat pictures. Right? It should all be kitten pictures, and it would be like I was dared. I was double dog dared. He and would one hundred percent fun. He would double fun that day. I he think so. Him. Right? He would double yes. fun. Yeah. It should be David. I want if it. If it gets above 12K, I want a picture of David Beatty laying on a floor buried in kittens. Just oh absolutely God. smothered in a carpet of kittens. <clears throat> but not smothering any kittens while you're doing no, it. No, no, no. That, leave that. that to Watsy. They've got that. It's okay. <laughs> right? Like, you know. Meow. Uh, yeah, so so <laughs> did, you, did you guys ever hear of, um, um, this is an old bad joke. I got to be really careful. Did you ever hear the German Dr. Doolittle, the World War II era Dr. Doolittle? He oh made boy. the animals talk. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that is the mouse. Meow. <laughs> Ups mm -hmm. the voltage. <laughs> <laughs> that is the mouse. Meow. <laughs> Ups the voltage. <laughs> <laughs> that. Is the mouse? The mouse is in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard that? That's a great one. Sorry. Oh God, Eric's just like, oh. No. Yeah, we're done. We're done, Eric. Uh, oh, well, no, we it, it, was a, it was a good run. It was a good run. It was a great run. No, it was two no, and a no, half no. years. My, it was my, way my, longer my, than I thought we'd do it. So, you know, Mike, okay. Mike, we were demonetized okay. earlier in the show. We would be monetized earlier. Well, well, he, he, he said the F word like three, three minutes in. I so. do it for the pure joy. The joy in your heart of kittens, David Beatty and kittens. I feel like I feel like what we need is we need. We need, if you hit like 15K in funding, we need the David Beatty kitten calendar, right? Where it would be Ooh. David wearing like fireman stuff and being hunky, but with kittens, it right? Like and a, this would it be. Like every picture would look like a wad of bubble gum with toothpicks for arms and legs holding a cat. It'd be horrible. Yeah, you, you could pull in the furry crowd too. It would be like, <laughs> hi, I'm David Beatty, and this is Mr. Fluffy Lumpkins. Say hi, Mr. Flippy Lumpkin. That would be great. I think. This escalated quickly. This disintegrated oh, quickly. It went to, so. Yeah, it went to hell in a handbasket. Oh, I'm so sorry. I should oh. go. So, David, oh. so, 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 how many more days do you have left? Uh, what do we got, Bert? Nine. Nine. 
Bird's think. just like, I want this to stop. I just, I want it. Uh, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. No, ser- seriously, but no. <laughs> nine days left, and, 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 you know, I know that we're joking around here, but David's right, you know, that they have a little issue. They may or may not get the, get a $3,000, you know, axe chop. So if you're interested in anything to do with the Weird West, all the stuff we've been talking about, the folklore stuff, the, you know, the Wild Wild West, I mean, anything like that. If you're interested in any wild, any of that Weird West, this is the this is going to be a great Kickstarter to back. I, I'm going to back it. I don't even play Weird Frontiers. I mean, you know, I, because we, I, can't, we I don't have that. the time. I don't have the time to read this. So I'm just going to jump in a game at some point. Wait, wait. Um, in one of the cons. I got three questions. I got three questions. These are my questions for every Kickstarter, right? Number one, David, why, how did, what was the, what was the moment? What did you think of where you were like, I have to make a game out of this? What was it? What was the stray random thought that hit and you were like, this is, this is lightning in a bottle? Um, well, the guys at my home table liked it a lot, and so we. we no, 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 no. Like before that, like, where were you? What were you doing when all of a sudden you had this idea? And what was that idea? Well, the idea was to come up with something that was not Deadlands. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Deadlands, but there was sure. part of the DCP system. Yep. So it was never intended to be. I'm going to go there. But we meet every Sunday and play. So. Okay. That probably doesn't so, answer your question. No, no, no. And and so and so what was the moment during playtesting where you were like, We're there. <laughs> this is it. Uh probably the first time I Bert, ran it. Bird, what what the what the hell, Bert? Bert's just like, I got a story. I can't tell it. I got a story. <laughs> uh, we weren't there until literally what was it, three days before it actually went to print? We were still making changes. Yeah. 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 Bert, Bert and I were like uh, arguing spouses. You know, I don't want to do this to this class. You're going to do it to this class. It works better. Okay. Whatever you want. Kind of. But yeah. We were, we finally had to get to a point where we were like, all right, we got to do it. Let's, let's, okay. let's send it off. But as far and as. So, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. Finish it. Finish it. Look, well, I was and... just going to say, as far as is, is knowing that it was something that needed to be put out, I would just say, after maybe a year running it at Gary Con and, and seeing people really take to it, you know, that lets you know that, hey, oh, look at the kitty. I'm sorry. Uh, a little distracted there. Oh but, you know, you, when you when people really like it and they're like, hey, man, you need you need to do something with this, then you finally you start kind of believing in it. And I would recommend that to anybody that's got a project, you know, before you dump, you jump head feet or feet first in, make sure you've got some honest feedback and people genuinely like what you're doing. So. Yes. Play test your products. This is not yes. done enough anymore. Mm, that's right. And and truthfully, you don't know what you have until you let other people beat the shit mm-hmm. out of it. Exactly. Because if they beat the shit out of it and they pound it and then they finally come back to you and they say, This you're good. Right. And if they I, don't beat I, the shit out of it, then you're gonna beat the shit out of them when your book is like gathering dust in the warehouse because that's right. Selling. I uh I was actually at a game store today. I went by and you know, dusty, musty graveyard of sad things sitting on a shelf and and not going anywhere. And all of it marked down to 50 percent off and it was still sitting there. And and you're like, OK, so so, David, so since is that where you picked up your copy of Weird Frontiers? No, smart ass. Um, <laughs> or not cool enough to order it. Not your problem. So so after it went after it went out, and the, after it went out to a bigger audience. Right. So after you shipped Weird Frontiers. What's the best story you got from somebody that backed the Kickstarter after they got it? <clears throat> to be honest with you, I think it's just, and this again, when you think of the 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 king of the mountain of Weird West, it's going to be Deadlands. Um, when that first person comes and they're like, "We're," and, it, and again, Deadlands is a great game, but when someone says, "You know what, Weird Frontiers, it's replaced our Deadlands game," we we really, and that lets you know that you've put something out that is worthy, you know, and yep. that, that can, can, I mean, obviously we don't have the marketing and the product and the everything that, that makes Deadlands the great game that it is. We don't have all that. So when you're a much smaller fish in a pond, and somebody kind of puts you in the same, in the same water with somebody like Shane Hensley, who's a legend, then you, it's a, it's a huge compliment. Mm-hmm. Shane grew up, um, Shane grew up about a half hour from where I did. 
And when I met Shane the first time and we were trading notes about where we were from, I found out that I was like, you're from where? What? What? And, <laughs> and we had a real moment. And and I've known Shane for 31 years now. And just I, I remember, you know, he had that crazy idea about putting it out and, and, and away it went. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. He is a decent. He's an unbelievably decent guy. So so, David, if if this funds the way you want it to. Do you have plans? Do you have some sort of nascent thoughts for your next project? Do you have some thoughts about what you'd like to do? What do you think, Bert? Uh, how many adventures do Bert we have? Is, we have? Bert, are you okay? Schedule. You're like red. <laughs> yeah, Bert's no, like, we, Bert, are you all right? You're like, I think okay. it's aligning. No, we have, we have a full schedule plan. There are modules in the pipeline, edited, just ready for layout. Uh, new, the the all-in-one version, the first version of the, the core book is sold out, I believe, everywhere. Do you have any left at all? I've got a David? few copies of the standard cover left. Right. Yeah. So the only way to get it really right now is as a POD in two separate books, which makes it a lot nicer at the table. Yep. Uh, we thought we are going to do a, a second run because you can't get the nicely printed one anymore. It's just POD. Um, right. So we're going to do a second run, and it's we're going to do it with the split books, uh, new modules in them, new art. Yeah. You cover new art. It's just yeah. basically following the model Joseph has done with uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics for so many years. You know, we all have that book, but the, he does enough with it, the new covers or, you know, filling in the white space with additional art that the folks that already have it on their shelf probably will want another copy of what we put out. So. We're definitely working on that second edition, and uh, we've got two adventures, I think, ready to rock and roll. Hashtag yet another cult. <laughs> yes, yes. It's a yes. whiskey cult, though. Whiskey cult. I, I'm, yeah. I, I. You don't know that. anything about that, do you? Nothing. Angels Nothing. and envy. <laughs> oh. I almost got my angels and envy out for you since I knew you were coming, but. I, uh, I, I think I don't know what I've. I always keep a couple of bottles stashed here. So I had some Willet. I had some others. I, I should go look. I should go run and look, but I don't think I need any bourbon tonight. I need no bourbon tonight. <laughs> you know, David might have another story to uh, to share. Um, the the Mountain Devils module uh, as, as a stretch goal. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. There is, it begins with uh, in, an in memoriam. You want to oh, share yeah. that story, David? Yeah. So Lee Nielsen and those UK guys, um, they're just a super, super amazing posse to be across the pond and support something over here as, as, as well as they have. And uh, so um, Matt Nixon was a fellow that uh, gamed with them and took ill and was very, very excited about um, playing Weird Frontiers. And unfortunately, he didn't make it. So, um, you know, I had messaged back and forth with him a few times while he was in the hospital. So once, you know, he passed, uh, and I've, we've done this a few times coming up, but um, my first instinct was let's let's get uh, Christopher Torres, who's an amazing artist that does great portraits. So we took uh, one of Matt's pictures and turned him into an NPC in the adventure. Um, so that that's really cool, to, you know, for those guys who know him uh, across the pond to see his smile, you know, forever immortalized in one of the adventures for the game that he wanted to play, but unfortunately didn't get a chance to. That's pretty decent of you. There's no kitten that's, involved, though. That's all right. You can't it's, <laughs> you can't all just be kittens, right? Um, no, no. Well, and and so, and what's your, so what's your elevator pitch? You know, when somebody says, what's this about? What What's your elevator pitch? What do you say? You can help me on that one. <laughs> ah, my mind has always been uh, the go-to. It's like, hey, it's uh, spaghetti western with all the weird you can handle. Did you like uh, Wild Wild Ooh. West? Did you like Paladin? Did you like Gunsmoke? How about we throw some Cthulhu in there? What do you think? I, I thought you were talking about the adventure. I thought you were talking about the adventure. I'm sorry, you, you, know, you got to say Wild. You, if you say Wild Wild West, you have to say TV show, not movie. Oh, there TV you go. Show, yeah. Movie. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I will say this though: if 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 you've never heard of the game, um, right now the the rule book we split it as Bert was saying, it is available on POD and it's cheaper than it's ever been. So, if it's something that you if you like DCC, maybe you've played a one-off game of DCC and you thought it was pretty cool. Uh, Weird Frontiers, uh, Goodman was kind enough to let me uh, actually reprint the rules for the game in Weird Frontiers. So, 
you're getting a standalone game. And when, when Mike holds up the big book, it looks very intimidating. But the first white section of pages are the rules and the classes. There's 12 classes in it. And that gray shaded paper, mm -hmm. that's the spells. And then that back part is uh, Town Generator, Two Adventures, mm -hmm. a Beast Jerry with 100 creatures. So you're, you're just getting a lot of bang for your buck with that. It looks like it's just cumbersome rule book which you're never gonna get all the rules but. And look the best way to, really the best way to experience this is to get into a game if you see a game of this being run yeah. like, like i yeah. said it's always say about dcc it's the dcc is the best con one shot game there is this is run on the dcc system so it's the same thing you get, i have never heard anything bad about any weird frontiers game run and matter of fact everybody the, the praise is just effusive Usually, when people get into to a weird frontiers game, so even if are you, you gonna, don't like westerns, you you will love this game. Are you gonna have Are you gonna have a western with clowns? Because I think you can cross back over. Mm -hmm. You can go hey, back. So there have been some people running. I think I was talking today in our little chat group. We've got somebody has actually ran uh, Carnival of the Damned with Weird Frontiers. So yeah, you could do it. So so so. Weird Frontiers is so far from Carnival of the Damned. Um, do you have another one of those sort of, you know, left turn at Albuquerque's in you? Do you have an idea that you've been sort of knocking around thinking about something else that's just sort of a, a, a breath of fresh air before you dive back into, into frontiers? I, I do have some things that, that are kind of on in the back of the brain, but I think that, you know, it, it would be, I don't think it would be right to create something like Weird Frontiers and not support it with products first and foremost, to, you know, because that's the, the only thing is when you find a game that you really like and then there's nothing else. There are a few, DC, or excuse me, yeah, DCC compatible products that, you know, you just never see anything <gasps> Rodeo of the Damned. That's genius. <laughs> mm. Oh, oh, oh. I like oh, I like this. Oh, yeah. I could so, I, but yeah, I mean, I think that um, there's some other things that are working their way down the pipes. Uh, I've got a, a DCC project that Bert and I have kind of kicked around a little bit that was writ, uh, wrote by uh, Daniel Bishop that we're doing some things on. It's going to be a special adventure. I don't want to kind of kick too much into that, but we definitely want to keep Weird Frontiers uh, at the forefront so that, you know, those that have supported it will continue to have, you know, things to keep it fresh because i think it's kind of important when you put something out and so and so what's what's some historical what are some historical tidbits that you'd like to get into weird frontiers that you haven't yet oh geez mm. that's a tough you know question. okay corral or um <clears throat> well i'll throw something out there david <clears throat> if you guys have the book and you've got that beautiful map that's in the book Bad Mike, if you got your book there and you want to show off that map, I don't know if you've got it. There are a number the only, of the only centerfold we'll see tonight. <laughs> there are a number of key locations that just throw out like should be uh, at the very front cover there. Is it? Oh, oh did you? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dear. I don't think I've never detached it. I, I can't detach <laughs> it, man. I've never detached it before. I'm not detaching it. Well, if you're looking <laughs> at that map, uh, there are places and names uh names of cults names of people names of groups that are just scattered out there that aren't really touched in the book and they're there to give you these these sparks of ideas of what you might do in a particular territory or or state um so yeah that's a great place to as, as just a springboard for ideas just look at that map and say oh what's this you know what's, what's this cult doing over here in utah which is how this adventure that we're uh kickstarting got the start from so so i have this gigantic stack I, I have a monster stack of old west books um biographies autobiographies and everything that you know my dad had a bunch and then i got those and then i have more and so on and my greatest unsolved western mystery that is this, to this day nobody knows what it was buffalo bill cody when he got his show up and running and went all over north america and was making just a fortune he took it over to england and they played either six or eight weeks in London. Now, first problem was, is when they arrived, they actually brought more small arms ammunition than the British home army actually had. So it sort of got stuck in customs for a while. But when they did a performance where Victoria, Queen Victoria came to see the show, she got down out of her stand, her grandstand, went out on the field and spoke to Cody privately 
with no one else around and handed him an envelope. And to both of their deathbeds, neither Victoria nor Cody ever revealed mm. what was in the envelope. Oh, wow. And Cody mm. never told his wife, his children, anybody. He kept it a secret until he died. And if that's not an adventure hook, I don't know what is. That's an awesome wow. story. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. It's it's one of these just weird little mysteries. But she she had a written letter that she had in her purse and when she walked out, she pulled it out and she gave it to Cody. They had an animated discussion and he took it. And then she never would tell anybody what it was about. Undoubtedly a page of the Necronomicon. I just <laughs> love this, right? It's like, ooh. Yeah, the, the, well, there's, the, the, those, that adventure writes itself. Right? That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, and again, one of these weird little things, right? Um, I, I have a couple of books on the history of the Texas Rangers, and there's stuff in that that you just scratch your head and you think, how in the world? Like, it's all this stuff. And it's and truth is always stranger than fiction. Truth is always stranger than fiction. So, you know, there's a gold mine in Endar Hills. There really is. I mean, you could take just about any book, any graphic novel, any, any element of, of Wild Wild West, and it takes very little tweaking to turn it into an adventure for something with weird frontiers or whatever your your weird west game is that you're using. But but so what's your favorite character class? Me of of the twelve, yeah, of the twelve. What's yours? I always go for the Tommy Knocker. For those who don't know what <laughs> Greg Gillespie, oh Jesus, <sighs> the class just went down in this building. Oh, don't mind him. He's Canadian and he can't help it. <laughs> yeah, he no, I love Greg. Um, the Tommy Knocker I like because the Tommy Knocker is the guy who dies, but his spirit's uh, uh, too stubborn to stay dead, so he kind of forces his way back into the body of, of, of the corpse, and he kind of just by sheer force of will animates it. But so when everybody's getting healed by the Revelator, which is kind of the priest of the class, the Tommy Knocker he doesn't get the healing; he's got to be stitched up. So if you mm. picture like your your allies, you know, with a stitch and the thread sewing your arm back on. <laughs> um, so you've got this Tommy That's Knocker great. guy who's he's just a he's got that to me, he's got that grit, Clint Eastwood grit. And most of the time Tenacity. The guys, yeah, the the guys that, that that run the game the most, if I'm lucky enough to sit in on one of their games, they as a matter of fact, Keith Nelson, who I love to death, um, last year at Gary Con, I played a Tommy Knocker and one of the elements of the game is if you roll a Nat one you get a hex token, which just means that you're 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 unfavored with luck. So, I rolled six ones in a period of two or three hours, and I uh, sat down at Keith's table uh, this year at Gary Con, and he handed me the Tommy Knocker class with the stack of hex tokens that he made, he made me play. <laughs> with. Oh, great! Long memories, long memories. Good memories, though, when you remember stuff like that. That's that's, that's right. A mark, that's a mark of a great game when you have people who who will put that much effort into tormenting you the next time they see you at a con. The best games are the ones where twenty years later you're still telling the stories of the fumbles and the foibles and the and the successes and everything else, right? We all, yeah. <laughs> no, nobody remembers a mediocre con game. Everybody remembers an amazing game. Yeah, right? Kurt, uh, Joe George is saying Kurt Roush. Kurt Roush, uh, he's been my roomie the last two years at, at Garycon, but Kurt puts so much effort into props. And he makes things, and, and this year it was just, he had a ship, and he had this purple Cyclops dude, and he mixed uh, Weird Frontiers with DCC and MCC, but yeah, Kurt's games, if you ever see his name on a, a con uh, uh, for a list of events, then you can get in one of his games, because he's an awesome guy. Now, now, so well, let's talk about North Texas a little bit. By the way, I'm, I'm going to toot my own horn for a second. We, we did sell out for the first time this early in history which is before the game registration so you haven't got your ticket you can still come but you're just going to have to buy your ticket at the door but what, what game are you running what games are you running at uh, north texas uh dave uh i will be running some weird frontiers of course mm -hmm. and maybe something that hasn't been announced yet oh yeah it's in the same vein so to speak but um i definitely will get a, a few games of weird frontiers on the book the bad thing so this this be like a test run of something, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, it's something that's been play tested a little bit here and there. It's very, mm. uh, I say it's closely related to Weird Frontiers, but a lot of fun. So I'll be running that. Whether it may just be super secret play test, which is what Mike Curtis always says, but and it, it may be unveiled by then. I'm not sure. It just depends mm. on 
and if uh, Bert and I can get everything in a, uh, I don't know, in a, we're trying to, to get other things, like I said, for Weird Frontiers out. So if we can get those things knocked out, I can focus a little bit more on some of this mm. other stuff. We well, better but bring I'll be your there. A, I'll be a there. And I'll be... I want you bringing your A game. I don't want your <clears throat> B or C game. Come on, man. And you, and you just need to set aside a time because I haven't put anything in yet. I know Friday's the deadline. Well, and me... tomorrow, this it, the deadline is within hours. Yes, please put something in. You will fill up. Your your game will fill up quickly because the general sign up is Monday. So yes, you need it in before yeah. Monday, please. That'll be the cattle please. call. Please. I think yeah. Gary said Friday was the deadline for. Yeah, events. Friday's the deadline, but Monday. Yeah, Friday's the deadline to get your game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but general, they'll, they'll be in, but uh, you guys want a game? If you want to break out the whiskey, Jim, get the Angels Envy out. Uh, Mike, show Oh, no, 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 no. We're, no, no, we're, no. It'll be, we're, we're going above Angels Envy if I'm, yeah. What? If, if we're going to be doing method drinking, then yes, we're going to be, you know, it'll be all in. So, um, we'll get you two, we'll get Skeeter and Levi and a few of the other, uh, of the posse that make the game so much fun. And I guarantee I, you. Just please, God, fun. don't. Don't skeeter green us where we have to play our own selves, <laughs> right? I was okay. talking about that with somebody. This I, I, I was I'm going to object that. with whoever said skeeter green makes the game fun. I'm objecting to that right there because I, <laughs> it was. I, I think he makes the game uncomfortable. I don't think he makes it I, fun. Only when he touches you, Mike. Only when he yeah, touches well, you. He's, I've been it, touched. it was. It was. You had to play as your own character, and yet skeeter does not realize I grew up in Kentucky. Right. So shenanigans. And 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 I was actually on the way down. I said to Mike, I, I said, you know, Skeeter Green's game. I had to play as myself and I don't think they were quite ready for my truck or what was in the truck. Oh, and dear. even now on Tuesday when I was driving down here, I was like, I'm even more prepared for cultists. I'm even more prepared. For, and nothing. So, so, Jim, now you put random it's, it's like let's make a deal in the 70s you're putting random things in your car just in case you have to play yourself in a game again you can say yes i have a 150 watt mag light i have a uh i have oh, a no, assault, no, no, no. assault weapon no, i have a no, no. bear i have bear spray i mike the first rule of lumens is and eric knows this right ex-police officer eric knows this yeah. lumens equal authority right 150 <laughs> watt is like amateur hour right if you're not oh, in the five, if you're not in five K uh, lumens, oh, you're not dear. even trying. If you don't tan people when you turn it on, that's just. So, <laughs> David, David, I have to ask, what, what, what do you think is your favorite Western soundtrack to have, to have in your head when you're getting ready for a game of Weird Frontiers? Uh, I mean, is there well, one that comes to mind, or? I'll be honest with you. I, I kind of hit on this before you popped in. Um, the years that I spent bringing this together. Uh, one of the few things that I did constantly was uh, listen to Dark Country. And yep. there's a there's a several hour long uh, playlist on Spotify for Weird Frontiers. But I usually like before a con session, um, like the Texas, the, the, the last one I ran with uh, Levi and those guys, it had that adventure had its own soundtrack that I pull from from that master list. So it's just stuff to me that kind of builds the mood. Some of it may just be orchestral, but there and again, it may. I think last time there was a. Uh, ZZ Top song that was played in. There's, there's, you know, I, I think music should match the mood of the encounter, and that, and you can hit yeah. all kinds of genres with that. But that's um, excellent. That's excellent. So, <coughs> so, um, as a miniatures guy, as a miniatures guy, um, have you ever thought about trying to do a Dark Frontiers where you also blend it with miniatures? I was in a Boot Hill game at Gary Gun that went really, really well. And uh, and of course, because because Alan Hammock, we had a Balrog that came out of the mine. Of course, I don't I don't of know course. why, but we did, right? So that's, so that's where they live. They live in mines. I mean, that's where they live, right? Uh, you dug too deep, but uh, do uh, do you ever think about trying miniatures out with it? Yeah, I've reached out to a, a few people just to see, you know, might possibly getting just a, a Weird Frontiers line, you know, of SDLs made for people who are in the printing, which. I've got two resin printers right here beside me, so uh, it's a slippery slope once you jump in. Um, but yeah, I mean the the miniatures I think are are great. I think to a certain degree, when you get into like counting the grids and this and that, you know, I think you're you're, you're right. kind of getting away from what made DCC so special, you know. But yep. yeah, it's definitely a good visual. Uh, most of the time, though, when you're when you're camp or packing up for a con, unless you're Kurt Roush 
you're not going to bring a suitcase, which I'm not kidding you, a full-size suitcase full of props that he brought awesome. just to run that's his game. Awesome. So, um, uh, that's something. I mean, it's fun to do, though. I mean, I'd, I'd love to have uh, Weird Frontiers miniatures or something set up to where I could do that. But usually, so the kick, too- so the Kickstarter funds. When are you shipping? How quickly after uh, after funding? Well, the adventure's complete. If I'm not mistaken, Bert, we're good to go on that, right? Yeah, PDF, PDF will go out basically right after funds drop from the Kickstarter. Okay. Then, depending on what we reach, whether it's a POD. Um, or if it's going to be traditional print, of course, the traditional print will take longer since it's got to yep. take that slow boat. Uh, but it, it's ready to go. The files are ready. Um, I'm going to upload the, uh, the file for the POD to get drive through to certify everything in case that's what we end up funding. So it's a quick turnaround. The product is done, done, not mostly yeah. done. Not, it's done. And that, that was one of the things with Bert, <clears throat> you know, I was adamant with because the, the kick, Kickstarter for the book was a year late, but you had COVID, you had the book doubled in size, you had some uh, legal shenanigans, legal, legal shenanigans, shenanigans. That we shenanigans. To get into. But so there was there were good reasons for it to be you know, as late as it was. But I don't want to put anything out uh, ever again. that's not ready to rock and roll. You know, I mean, like Bert saying, we'll send the files to uh, the traditional print if we do. I've already got quotes on that. So I guess it just depends on how long it takes them to, you know, get it to me. To get fulfillment, I'll I'll be doing the fulfillment on it um, because I'm a fireman and I only work uh, I work 40 out on 96 off. So why not spend that off time taking very good care of your books and mailing them to you with love from South Carolina and a kitten. Okay, no Ooh. kittens in the mail. First no of all, kittens no kittens in the mail. In the mail. Pictures um, of kittens. We'll do that. But um, so so I think I think one of the great things about you, David, that let's let's say this really quickly. <clears throat> Hold on, can I get Kathy to log on upstairs so she can listen to you talk about me? Because Oh, dear. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really could use some help in, in that area. Uh, Dude, I'm, go ahead, go ahead. I'm staying out of that. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to hear that. Um, <clears throat> here's what I would say, right? Um, we're all too guilty of sitting on a couch. I, Mike, I actually had this conversation with Gary yesterday oh, where where we we sit on a couch and we very passively let somebody else's art wash over us. Right. We we watch we watch some we binge watch some television show. We we do whatever. But but more than anything else, it takes a real leap to actually turn the equation around and be somebody who creates art, who actually creates something and 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 crafts something and spends the time and, and spends the effort and so on. And and hats off to you, David, because I remember hearing about you play testing right because i did you play test it for three years at gary con i think it was three years wasn't it before the uh, kickstarter well, at well, least it, three it, it was being run uh all the way up to <clears> probably <throat> the time we went to print when you say bird i was probably no but but before that i mean when did you first hey i'd like to try something out would you guys be willing to play a game when was that moment was that 2015 2016 i'd say 2016 probably at, at if not gary con maybe one of the uh maybe game hole i'm not sure i did a lot of con i did a lot more cons back then than i do now so it's kind of hard to pin it down on the exact con right but 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 you had the idea and when you did that you literally flipped the switch right you said i've got this i've got this clever idea and, and I want to create art. And and too often, particularly when you have people on a show like this, right? There's a lot of the process, right? And and I'm I'm just as guilty as anybody else. I'm asking you the perfunctory questions, right? When's it going to ship? Are you gonna ship it? Is it really gonna ship? Because I I waited on flipping Dwimmer Mount. I don't even want to tell you how long I waited on that some bitch. Oh, that's a blast from the past, bro. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and sorry, don't poppers. don't get me started on other things. We're not going there. But but more <laughs> importantly, <laughs> but more importantly, you sat down and you said, I want to create something special. And I want other people to kick the tires and take it for a drive and tell me what I need to tweak and give me that feedback. And some of it's horse shit, but some of it makes sense and, and all of that. Right. And you went through all that to birth your baby. And now you're just adding to the family. Right. And and more than anything else, David, this is a hobby that literally its deepest roots run into people like you. And I think that's a real, you know, again, there's some schmucks in this industry. Oh, no's 
shock and surprise. But but for every eight or nine of those peckerheads, we've got somebody like you, Dave and and Bert. You know, there's oftentimes the unsung assistant. So I'm glad to actually see you in front of the camera, getting the credit as well. Yeah, I and would you guys. Not- I would not be here if it weren't for that man right there. I, right. I, I, I owe him a full body massage or something. Whoa. It's not Whoa. that kind of like, stop. <laughs> Jesus. Whoa. Um, but, but, but really and truly, David, like you are such a good egg. And, and every interaction we've ever had, even when you've asked me to like donate money for kittens, it, it, it's coming from the heart. And it's just, you're such a decent, decent guy. And Ramstein. Yeah, that's this is this is something that you find out about Jimmy Kitchens, as I like to call him. What? You, you, Jesus! You, uh, you tell him you tell him about your your Rammstein concert escapade, and then he goes into telling you how his I don't know it was your friend whose wife or somebody actually knows the guitarist for Rammstein, so mm-hmm. maybe just maybe he could have got you set up backstage or something to meet mm. the band. But it's one of those things you find out afterwards after you've already been to the concert. So so so. You need to know that they toured, was it two years ago? It was two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. They toured two years ago. And one of my best friends in the world lives in Edmonton, Alberta. And he and his two daughters, who have grown up absolutely as thick into metal and, you know, Rammstein and Tear and all the rest of them, they flew to St. Paul to see the concert, right? Now, Dave, you went in, you went to Philly, right? Yeah. You went to Philly, right? So lo and behold, like my friend goes to the show and he says, you know, I said, I said, so how was it? And he goes, I think I have second degree burns from all the fire. And I said, really? And he goes, oh, my God, like it was the greatest thing ever. And so I'm excited about this. And Dave's posting about, oh, we're going to Philly, blah, blah, blah. And then Dave manages to trump my friend's story, because who do you run into in the airport? Do you have yeah, the picture? No. You've got to have the picture. No, I don't have it right. right off the oh, track. hold on. I'm digging. I you the, talk. The lead, I saw the, the lead singer of Rammstein in the airport. So, of course, I'm mm. fanboy all over. And then <laughs> you can tell it was one of those things. He looked really constipated when he took the picture with me. So I'm sure he oh, was very boy. thrilled. But I think they got accosted by TSA while they were in the. Oh, no. So no, no. it probably wasn't a good <sighs> for those. <people. laughs> I wonder why. But, but you know, this is. Uh, I'm fanboying all over Dave right now because he's such a decent guy, right? I I have, for 30 some years, I've seen no shortage of people who have taken advantage of other people. I've seen people, you know, I have funded Kickstarters that took forever or didn't even ship. And, and really and truly, you have to hold up the great ones and you have to talk about how great ones are great. And if you haven't backed, if you haven't backed this Kickstarter and you haven't talked to other people about this Kickstarter and you haven't shared the link, you need to get off your duffs and make sure that it gets to 12, 13 K so that there's no question that this gets funded and it gets printed the way it deserves to be printed because Dave and Bert have done a hell of a job and they deserve all the accolades they should be getting for it. The fact that you guys haven't won a, uh, an any just shows you how stratified <laughs> and <laughs> shitty the award ceremony is. Oh, because uh, yeah. you guys should have been nominated, That's right? Like, yeah, whole episode so. on that. God, yeah. what a what a collective, you know, uh, you uh, can only have so much you, mutual back padding. Right, but you'd have to give away five of those huge books and ship them to, like, I don't know, Serbia just yeah, to get Mongolia. yourself... You know, uh, consider. Yeah. yeah, and that's and then again, right? Because because I would much rather you have a funded Kickstarter and solid sales than an award where you had to bribe your way to getting the award. Because truthfully, yeah. because truthfully, um, cream rises. It really does. And and anyway, so I've I've, I've waxed on I'm, enough. I'm creamy. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying you're lumpy. That eventually will. Ooh, wow. Ah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, I should quit now. Well, it was great seeing you. Eric, any um, any gaming news this week that I missed that you perhaps would like to throw out? Uh, you did have a, a very interesting video this week. Which one? Uh, I don't know if you want to talk right. about that a little bit. Which one? Yes. About the SRD, which I thought was pretty oh. much on, on target. 
How about far yeah. west shipping? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, always uh, a favorite topic for you, Tinga. Uh, far, far, listen, Pin Pinnacle's involved with Far West now. So it will probably ship. They say they're on the boat. But, uh, yeah, no, the uh, SRD for third edition, which Watsi a year ago was saying, oh, it's in progress. And then it's like, oh, we're working on it. And now they don't even mention in their updates. Their updates, it has been scrubbed. And I, I think it's fairly obvious they probably fired everybody who was anywhere involved in making sure I don't know, Asmodeus was not included in the SRD or whatever. I don't know what they're looking for because if they're going to release it to Creative Commons, it was already under the OGL. Really, how how much is going to need to be removed if you were already giving it away for free to put into the Creative Commons? Hmm. It's almost uh, like they, they promised us something they never meant to keep. Huh. Weird. Well, that was just to get people to shut up, you know. And, right. and, and listen, let's be honest too. The third edition SRD doesn't do them any good. All right, it's not supporting their current rule set. So anybody using that to publish games or publish modules isn't helping Watsi one bit. You're in their mind. You're the competition, and you're not supporting their rule set, which is five E. Three E is dead. So they're in no rush. Uh, I'm surprised that they actually didn't scrub the earlier references from yeah. their their updates. I, I was expecting to go back and have to do the Wayback Machine. They haven't gotten to that part yet. But I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, I could throw something else out there that I don't know. I, I don't know how we're going to get a, a Gygax Memorial statue and table and benches if that's it's not already thing, been done yeah. because we need to do a whole show on that, that yeah that's, that's, like, that's a that's actually hmm. something that i don't think people understand what's actually happening um, a lot of I, good I, people uh, a lot of good people with great intentions donated a lot of money that yep. no longer seems to be there i think people are yep. very happy that the statue is getting made i see a lot of effusive praise um I think it's awesome. But, but, but the first thing that Eric and I said, the first thing we said to each other is, okay, how are they going to pay for it? And apparently it's going to be bricks um, mm. because uh, they don't have, out of the $200,000 they have, like I said, we'll get into this the whole show because it's a big mess. I don't want to drag Dave and Bert to this mess. I don't mind dragging Jim into this mess because he, right. loves, Jim, mess. he loves messes. Me. But, but, you know, they had at one point – one point, the Gary, the Gen Con auction donated that year. I want to say 2010 or 11, donated all their money to the Gygax Memorial, as well as donating uh, partial sales. Let's let's go through the list. Books. Let's go through the list. Right there was the Cheers Gary book that was supposed to raise money that was a limited edition. There was oh, the yeah. Gen Con auction. There was the Wizards of the Coast special run of the books of the player's handbook DM's guide and monster manual that we're raising money for the for the Gygax memorial. There have been no shortage of private donations and some of them were not insignificant and all of these to be used to build a monument to the man who who you know say what you will is the is the most recognized name behind what we know of as Dungeons and Dragons and created an entire industry that has forged countless friendships and and all of these are great sentiments but where's the beef where's the money where did all the money go these these are public records and, and eric has done a great job over the last few years of really no one else but eric and i'm going to toot your horn eric no one else but you has kept up with this as close as you have because i don't see people really it's like one of those things collect it, it, it exited the collective consciousness uh, you know that this fund at one point had over two hundred thousand dollars in it and now we're down to how much twenty seven thousand uh, tw less than tw less than twenty five so was this a matter of them just taking out more money each year for the running of the fund than was uh feasible? it was all the last the last filing is twenty twenty two and there's a hundred and fifty k expense for uh let's let, let me uh oh my man is, he's got yeah he's got it right there 
Uh, Memorial Project payment. Uh, 150000 That's insane. Now, if they pay that in 2022, we're in 2024. I mean, theoretically, I guess the statue could be in storage somewhere and we never heard about it. <laughs> I don't know. Even though um, 150K seems kind of light, but I, you know, I don't know what the statues cost. I, I, I don't, don't know, know what statues cost. I, I know I, this. I, I know this. I could buy a lot of whiskey and bourbon for $150,000. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can buy a metric shit ton of bourbon and whiskey and and we can have a great we can have a great time but but for one hundred fifty thousand dollars to disappear and physically have nothing i am pained i am i am pained by this and well, and truthfully like there's yeah. people there's people you could ask that might have answers right i think i think the person to talk to would be paul stormberg you know right. paul is the person who has managed to survive the the vortex and get to the heart of the hurricane. And he has been in the eye of the storm dealing with the hurricane for so long that he is immune to a lot of the hurricane's powers and threats of lawsuits. You, you could say what you want about Paul, and he's come under criticism the last few years, but no, but he got stuff done. Gail fiddle fought around for 15 years, got, got nothing done. And one of the reasons I, I hear, this is just what I hear, no, I haven't any conversation. Is that the city council detested her, detested her, and at a certain point, were probably just, just stonewalling the project just because they didn't like her. And it wasn't until the Gygax kids got involved and Paul, who is a respectably presenting individual, yep. you know, with a plan, got involved that, that anything happened. Which you know, the first thing that happened was the bench, obviously the park bench, you right. know, which actually was the only thing that's ever gotten done. You know, because Gail was bound and determined to, to keep all of, you know, Gary's stuff in a lockbox underneath a bed, you know, in a in a faraway nation somewhere where nobody could touch it. And that's why we didn't see anything published by him for a decade. And, he, you know, he exited the collective, you know, unconsciousness of people who weren't into D&D. But Paul has gotten stuff done. Yes. Uh, my, my thing yes. now is just that I I think that people are excited about this project and I, I and I agree it's great to have it happen but I think people need to also be ready about the fact that they are going to ask you for money again to pay for this project and, and right. you know and I'll have, I'll have words on that in a different period because I well, have strong words that because I, I I know for a fact Doug donated the North Texas RPG con donated a thousand dollars to this way 10 years ago so we're, we're you know we put in a thousand dollars just to watch nothing happen for a decade and and i'm i'm sure other people donated far more than we did or you know as much as we did so um we well, have a you personal know, one, stake one of the one, one of the holdups on on the initial uh, approval was the requirement that like geneva was putting in that there had to be monies put aside for maintenance of the memorial and it had to be the, the monies had to be there, so that was the whole. Initially, the selling of bricks with names on it for donations and stuff like that. Initially, going back, however many years that is, eight something like that. That's what the bricks were going to be. <coughs> oh my God! Wait, there's a cat assaulting David. I there's a cat that. assaulting yep, I David. Saw, I just saw a David cat Beatty, there. man of a thousand cats. So, but yeah, we, we, we'll Sorry. do a special on. We'll do yeah, a special and, and, on. And Kim, Kim, we may have to consult with Kim because Kim is a resident of that city and probably went to the city council meetings where this all went down. So she she's did. probably got some good info on that that we need to talk to her about. And but yeah, I, I just but my I guess my take on it is everybody needs to step back and, and let's just wait and see what happens because it's great they've announced the statue. But there's well, no. Well, they've approved it. The council's approved. They've approved. It. They've approved That's it, right. which is That's a great right. first step. But I think people that think they're going to go to GaryCon next year and sit at the statue are need to pull break, to put the brakes on, put the have brakes cautious on a optimism. Yes, very right. Much so. She's good... agreed to go on the date with you, but all bets are off after that, buddy. All <laughs> bets are off after that. Is this, is this, is this, is this Kim well, or is say. this? Um, is this Kim or is this the statue that's going on the date with you, Jim? I thought Nobody's it was Gail. going on the date with me. Nobody's going on the date with me. No one. <laughs> no one. So, so uh, yes, like, like really and truly, though, right? Like the, the, 
the sentiment of, my gosh, it's been approved by the city council. Again, this is a huge and gigantic step, but but we're a long way from it being someplace where you can so, sit at so, a table and run a game. So, J, JP, right. we'll talk about, we'll, we'll do a show with this and we'll talk about this and Kim can probably have some good information too. The people I know that live in Lake Geneva, you have to understand their very complicated relationship with Gary Gygax. It's a love-hate relationship. And I, yes, he did bring in thousands of dollars of revenue and put the city, but to them, the city was already on the map. For those that don't know, this was a huge resort town in the 20s and even before that rich people in chicago that wanted to get out of the city and they would go so to their point of view the old timers lake geneva's always been on the map they don't need no game game guy from you know chicago and they a lot of people would say he's not a proper resident he's a chicagoan because Gary identified with chicago and so like i said there's a huge hate love hate with gary and his legacy um but we'll talk about, like I said, that's a whole show, man. We can go into that, and, yeah. and, and we'll get Kim and Jim to throw their opinions out there because they, they both have some insight. Jim is shaking his head like he does not want to get involved in controversy, which is bullshit. He loves it. <laughs> no, I, I, I have nothing to add to that, right? Because because like everybody else, you know, the, the, the hardest part was is for years I had a conversation with Gail. I had, a, I had a regular conversation with Gail, and I will gladly share that with anybody that would like to give it a read. But, but trying to get her to understand how her actions were being seen was much like David Beatty trying to herd cats. It wasn't going anywhere. And, and every time there was a misstep, right? You know, I, I could go back and on my Facebook page, you could see where I was posting pictures of my son when he was little and, and she's right there like, oh, this is great and so on and so forth, right? Gail was all over my Facebook page. And, and finally she just, and, and I said, you've got to stop this, right? You've got to stop this. You need to actually do some things that actually show the people who gave you money that you're moving in the right direction. And it went off the rails. And, and at that point I was out and somebody, somebody accused me of, of being on Gail's side. No, I have always been on the side of, I'd like to see the monument get built. Yeah. I've always been on the side of people should see something for the money. And, and the notion that the notion that Luke or any of the other Gygax kids shouldn't have some sort of say in this is ludicrous, is yes. absolutely, absolutely ludicrous. Yes. And, and unfortunately, reality was never something that got along well with Gail. Right. And, and so we're in a much different place, right? Like the Kickstarter that closed yesterday, I mean... I couldn't, I didn't have enough time to sell my kidney to get into the true Lord Kickstarter, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, but, but, but it did fabulously well. It's over 200 K, right? Yeah. So good for them. It's, it's stuff finally coming to market that should have come to market more than 10 yes. years ago, 15 yes. years ago. And it's only been coming to market now because of legal things going on because the estate needs the money. And other than that, it would still would be locked up in a lockbox underneath a bed in a different state, in a different, I mean, it would still behind be a sign that says beware of the leopard, right? right. That's the only <laughs> thing she didn't put on it. So thank and, you. You know, and this is for a lot, you know, I know collectors for years and years and years. I mean, th this was, Oh dear. I moved it. I had a, I had a cop. Oh, here, here we go. of course I have everything here. This was the Holy grail of collecting, right? For years. Because oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they had to destroy all the copies that weren't sold by X date due to Gail, you know, getting the license. And a lot of us, including Jeff Tulanian, who did yeoman's work on this, a lot of work on this, had just had basically thought, well, we're never going to see this ever again. It will never be reprinted. We actually have a chance this could be reprinted. And that's that's amazing. That's how much the fortunes have changed in the last few years. But that's not because of anything Gail did. That's no. because of that's, lawsuits and that, that's lawyers. because the that's because a court appointed an individual appointed by the court got involved and said, "Whoa, right? Sh shenanigans. Let's uh, not well, yeah. just there were problems." And we have to fix these problems. And the way we're going to start by fixing the problems is we're going to monetize the IP that exists that has lay fallow for so long. Mm -hmm. And yep. and that's and that's again that's you know stewardship. So so I always 
I, I always talk about if you're the if you're appointed the executor of a will, your only job as an executor is to carry out the explicit wishes of the deceased. That whatever your personal animus is, you check that at the door. If you agree to be somebody's executor, the only thing you're going to do is you are going to do the fucking things they told you they want you to do. And if you do anything different, you shouldn't be the executor. And and Gary didn't Gary didn't want his life's work or the work that he spent the last few years of his life working on put into a box and not shared with the world. He didn't want it to go out of print. He yes. didn't want it to become hoarded by collectors. He wanted people to play in the world that he owned. He wanted people to play in the world that he and Jeffrey Tolanian developed and worked on. He wanted them to play in the world that Steve and the trolls published. And he did not want it scooped up and taken away and put into a box and told us, don't touch this. And so we're in a better place. We're in a tremendously better place. And I think Paul Stormberg deserves a lot of credit for navigating a path through the storm. It's just great. So me, it feels like that, 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 that marriage was troubled. It feels a lot like Gail had a lot of resentment towards what her husband created and maybe even his fan base to do that. To just bury it away. I, I, I th well, so what people have tell, told me that know them, she was never very interested in the actual product. She was very, very proud of what Gary had done and the fact that so many people admired him. But D&D &D was not her thing. And if you look at some of the interviews after he passed away, you can tell that she still has a very little grasp about what it really is. You know, some of the stuff she said about initiatives to bring it to schools and stuff and, and have, you know, D&D &D part of school. I mean, she had very little grasp of what actual D&D &D was, but she was very... She, I think she tried to be a steward, but she was in a way over her head when it came to anything, you know, especially if you don't understand something. I mean, if my wife was a croquet expert and she passed away, I, I couldn't talk about croquet. I don't know anything about it. You know, I, if she was the greatest croquet player that ever lived, I, I would be, yeah, she's the great. I mean, but I couldn't advocate for that because I didn't know what I don't know what it is and I think that's what she got caught in is that she really didn't know what you know what and like I said this is my own opinion this is absolutely just spitballing right. this is not you know this is just opinion but and I think that through the years that just got worse and then of course her relationship with the guy X family I mean she went to the first few Jer Gary cons she was welcome there and then the relationship got sideways when Ernie and and Luke had Gygax magazine, and no matter what she or her lawyer says, they shut it down. That's just absolutely what happened. It may not be the actual definition of what happened, but that's what happened, is they shut it down. They shut down Gygax magazine. And, and at that point, the families just didn't work together. And so you had Gail over here and the kids over here, and, and you know, just nothing nothing got done for a decade. And I, I, it, through fortunate circumstance, we're going to finally see these works reprinted, which is amazing. And as much of a collector as I am, as much as I know I could get, you know, six, seven hundred dollars for this on eBay tomorrow, I am overjoyed to see this reprinted. I really yes. just want to see it reprinted. Yep. I want to see regular people not have to pay six hundred dollars to see that stuff. And I think that that's what's <clears throat> gonna happen. I think that's great. So Yes. Um, amen, 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 amen. And and while we're saying that at the same time, if you buy the Gygax reprint stuff, whatever you do, you need to buy David Beatty's Kickstarter. If you haven't funded it, <laughs> I, I, think, I think no matter which way I point, it comes up to kittens and David Beatty and Bert. And, and David and, and Bert are waiting for you to put more money into their Kickstarter. And when we have a memorial to David and Bert someday with a cat, obviously, in there also, you could say you were at the, here on the ground floor to help this out. That's right. This happen. I cool. mean, I expect a picture of David Beatty with a cat on his head tomorrow right so please help me please we've please find this kid well you're the you're the photoshop guy jim i expect that to be your i like am guy. not a fo i am the meme lord you give me a great picture i'm good i can Where's go the, let there. me call tom tell tom tell us we'll have this done tell us, tell us. Tom tell us. Was in earlier. He was watching. i know <laughs> my god we had a tell us appearance that's crazy yes so, yes. so dave yes. so dave what's what's the what's a parting shot what's your what's your what's your salvo across the bow to make sure that people understand how important this kickstarter is uh well this is uh the first actual product that stiff whiskers press has put out since the 
the Kickstarter with the five adventures. So it's it's important to us to, to put something out. It's a great adventure. Um, there's a chance that we'll put an even uh, an additional great adventure in with it. So you're you're taking a chance at getting two adventures and a very nice product. We're not gonna we don't want to do POD if we unless we have to. Nothing wrong with POD, but obviously you guys all know if you get something traditionally printed, it's just a nicer product. So it'd be great to to have our first you know our first product since we crawled out of that dusty basement of so many years uh do pretty well but uh that's that's all i'll say and i'll tell you again guys if if you're not familiar with the game uh check it out on um uh, drive through because you can get the uh, pod of the rule book right now for way less than we normally ask for it and it's yep. a great way to get in on the game I, I really do think if you like the weird west and you haven't tried it if you've ever played a one-off of DCC or MCC and you like that, something about it, I think you probably would dig it. So that's my parting shot. Give it Very a try. Cool. Nice. Definitely, yes. Support these guys. Support small, small creators. Support OSR. And this is this is this is the perfect textbook example of somebody you need to be supporting. Absolutely. This is support absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Like this is this is the heart of our industry. Yeah. And if you don't support this, you suck. If you don't support this project, you suck. No, you don't support you don't, people as dead decent as David Bodie. You're not dead going to me. back. You, right? We will yank you, yank your pass to North Texas. We will. Yank I. Your badge. Oh, I will absolutely. find you. I will find you in an auction, and I will make a point of eviscerating you. Right? Wow. I will. You don't, you I will, don't want that. That's your mm, promise, right there. I will call you out. I'm going to make a special episode of Tin Cars Tavern at North Texas where I go around and I find people oh. and I'm going to make them show me if they back the project or not. And if they didn't, I'm going to make them do a jig of shame. A jig of shame. Oh, and it's going to be like bullet goodness. mixed with Red Bull. Ugh. Oh Ugh. It's going to be oh. it's going to be like the worst. It's going to be the worst Jaeger bomb of all time. It's going to be bullet and it's going to be like Red Bull. And then just on top of that... I'm going to find an old bottle of Orbitz with that weird little spherical crap floating around in it, and I'm going to put it in that. And then you have to drink it lukewarm. Or just German we whiskey to... like we did last year. We can do it. Go to that oh, no, I don't want to know Jim, about no, your parties. Jim, Jim's not going to – Jim wouldn't even go there. Nobody goes to German whiskey. Nobody, nobody goes yeah, there. Yeah, no, 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 no. Never nobody again. goes there. Nobody goes no. there. All oh. right, so, so Bert, are you going to be at North Texas as well, my friend? Uh, sadly, no. I have a homestead. I have animals to take care of. So. Look at that. Yeah. I told him he could bring his goats. I mean, the goats would fit in perfectly. <laughs> no, no, no goats at the midnight <laughs> auction per the, per the police from two years ago. <laughs> Come on now. Rules are made to be broken, Jim. Rules hey, listen. <laughs> and after last year, and after last year's midnight auction, I can't. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's going to be, you know, no. this year's auction, minute auction is going to be completely G rated. Bring the family, bring the kids. It's going to be. When? Uh, no, who it, are you? You know, we're. we're where, yeah, who, I'm, where's I'm, Mike? I, I'm yeah. Satan. It's bullshit. Yes, of course. You know, it's going to be. It's going to be. Fun, fun, fun for if the you, whole family. Br bring if the kids, you bring don't the neighbor's let, kids. Yeah, if you don't great. let me do my inspirational reading with props, I'm going to be crying. Crying. So. This year's, I just, I'll just i just let you percolate this. This year's theme for the Midnight Auction is is a salute to the 70s because we love the 70s and we love the fact that d and 50 years old was created in the 70s. So can you get more wholesome than the 70s? I mean, think about it. You know, Badly discos, yeah. the 70s. dirty people, <laughs> guy, gyrating sweat. Oh, wait. Disc yeah, Bell bottoms. Disgusting. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. Okay, yeah, I'm bullshitting yeah. you. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be absolutely. I don't disgusting. have enough. I don't have enough body hair for this topiary, man. I'm just telling you. Just we'll, get, we'll get you a pube toupee. We'll make you fit in. Disco balls. Ow! Disco Polyester. Oh, man. We're gonna celebrate everything that made this. You know, afros. It's gonna be everything that made this decade great. We're gonna God, celebrate. Beatty, don't you have a woman in that house to chase you around with a spatula? Jesus yeah. Christ, man. <laughs> Stop that stuff. Hey, uh, Michael Curtis texted me back, and he said that, yes, technically, it was Dallas in space. So he ran Oh, uh, that was it. I couldn't remember. Space. Yes. <laughs> Dallas in space. In space. Uh, he oh, no. Yes, yes. I'm Dallas Jock Ewan on a satellite. Where is Miss uh, Luella? Well, was it Miss Luella? No, what was her name? It was. It's Ms. like he uh, tried to make things harder. It wasn't even bad enough. They just did Dallas. He put it in space because he's trying to make it even crazier. 
Because that's Michael Curtis, yes. I woke up and the shuttle had never docked. Oh, my God. (laughs) JR, how dare you? Someone lasered JR. (laughs) Somebody lasered lasered JR. (laughs) Who lasered JR? Yes. Oh, no. Sue Ellen's Ellen's drinking reactor juice again. She's out on the floor. But don't worry. It was all in the hologram deck. It was all all in the holodeck. It didn't count. Oh, my God. It was actually a clone. It was a clone. That's how you did it, though. There are right. Eric, we better wrap right. this up. We, we, we're talking clones Yeah, I think we're now. getting punch yeah. drunk right now. Time uh, to call her done, bud. Time to call her done. Uh, may I? Just real quick. Um, so yeah. the play tests for both Last Stop Perdition and the the, uh, the stretch goal module uh, are out there. Uh, my, my group, uh, if you want to see how the sausage was corrected and, and things went, it's out there if you want to listen to it. Uh, Definitely, Both on yes. podcast and on YouTube, you can find them. So there you go. The play tests are there for scrutiny <laughs> hold on a second now so let's take a look so since we've been yakking yeah uh we haven't moved it yet so we're at 10 mm. to 5 we're at 10 to 5 with nine days to go at least it didn't <coughs> drop i was mm. i was kind of wondering if it would drop after the show wow oh, geez. thank you <laughs> wow my heart that 3k just wrecked out right now oh. just <laughs> yikes what yeah, I hell, love you guys, man. man. I really do appreciate you having us on, guys. No problem. No, no problem. it was a blast. It was you really good. You guys are good. all like in one form or another. I really look up to all of you, so I'll leave it at that. Oh, Thank stop. You. Stop. Wow. You know that, Jim. Wow. You and I have a special relationship. Oh, stop, Mr. Fuzzy Lumpkins. You're just the best. You're the best, Mr. Fuzzy Lumpkins. I still think the calendar. I think you needed to put that as a uh, as stop, an incentive. Stop, no, it's just stop. or da- oh no no do the David Beatty poster right. It's David Beatty in his fireman hat and like his boots with cats, just lots of cats. Right? Oh, just yeah, with naked with, with cats, cats covering up the private spot. Oh, that was implied. Hat. That was implied. Oh, I just no. wasn't going to say. I wanted to make sure right? people knew. I wanted to make sure. I, yeah, I know, right? Mike. Mike, keep that keep that sweatshirt on, please. That's right. Um, That's right. Whoa! Oh, oh my God! I'm getting the vapors. Huge, huge thanks to Dave and Bert. The vapors here. What a no tremendous vapors, nozzle! Uh, no you. vapors. So oh. your fireman's nozzle is gigantic. Uh, I cannot right, imagine. Get out of here. I've, getting bad. <laughs> I've put the link in the chat, but if you're watching this later, um, okay. But the everybody the who's still the screen, on, it's easy. Thank cars. All, six of, all six of you that are version. still with us, tell everybody. Yeah. Tell your mom. Yeah, they're, tell they're your dad. Eighteen still with us, but they're there. How um, many? Eighteen. Jim, we have, whoa, wow. Well, we we hit like thirty at one point. People yeah, come and go. Scared them off. You know, cowards. I, well, I, I try, but it doesn't always it was work. The joke. It was the fact uh, that you didn't get the. Never mind. Anyway. Yeah. What's I'm next week, Gary? All right, come on, come on. I, I got to watch Fallout. You guys are bo- Fallout. Oh, 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 dropped the day early. You guys are blowing me away. Oh, all right. Yeah, it didn't drop early. It didn't drop at 6 p.m. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, 6 p.m. Mike, I don't have to thank. We always, we always know yes. that. Yeah, that's so, all right. Go oh, wait, I didn't, I didn't cough as much tonight. I think I think after two weeks, I may be... I think the whiskey helped. I think the whiskey did help, yes. And your battery charge held out, too. Alcohol. My batteries held out. Yeah, my batteries. Yeah, alcohol. Did you uh, did you print out the special masks we talked about, Mike? (laughs) (laughs) By the way, I show my. I by the way, Jim, I have to. My wife better not be listening. I show my wife, and she's like, "Well." Hello, nurse. Hello, Mr. Hit the button, Jim Carr. Hit the button. Nobody's listening right now. Nobody's listening right now. Nobody. We actually picked up another listener, another viewer. By the way, folks, live stream, next live stream is Friday night, 8 p.m. Rob Conley is giving away some goodies. Uh, definitely, definitely. His recent Kickstarter just shipped. Uh, people are getting their copies, and R- R- Rob is in a generous mood. So just wow. be sure of one. And, nice. and listen, we don't unless let, unless Tim Shorts uh, you know joins us. When Rob starts talking, we all just kind of like do our own thing because you can't shut Rob up. So if Rob's giving away stuff, come in. His stuff is good. Enjoy it. Thank you to Jim. Maybe maybe we'll bring Jim back. Jim might be in a regular regular at this point. I, I, I like you that. know, I, 
as long as he doesn't take my screen time, I'm okay because I'm contractually obligated for a certain amount of screen time. So you know, I, oh, uh, that's why my, you my, need ego, my my ego my ego is you know obviously up here. So you know. yeah, yeah. I am yeah. glad to be here as little or as often as you would like. That's what Brutus Whoa. said to Caesar before he stabbed him. He said the same thing. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Never mind. I won't say what I'm thinking. <laughs> what I will say instead is, please back Weird Frontiers yes, Kickstarter. Definitely. Please make sure that we get the poster of David Beatty's nozzle and the cast. Yes. We yes. just, we need this, right? We need this. Mm. I hope Kathy's yes. somewhere in your house hearing this, David. Yes, please. So, you know, I mean, I, I mean, really and truly, a picture of the nozzle and a kitten. And, you know, mm. it's the foot long and then some. So, on that note, yes. Um, on that note, folks. Uh, be safe, be well. God bless. Roll those dice, roll them well. Um, Poor Bert. Know, Bert is as red as a beet right now. Look, be He's gotten redder. Bert's like, just, yeah. Bert's like, oh, God. Make it stop. <laughs> All right. Make it stop. Later. Thank you. God bless. Love you. Love roll you your all. dice. Back 